and now we are going to live stream to a custom wow you can live on twitch now wow that's a new one that popped up and facebook and youtube that's awesome all right so live custom streams And we are ready to go live here on clearproptv.com. Well, hello, everyone. We are live. It's so nice to be here. It's another Monday. Had a great birthday weekend. I'm still recuperating from that. And we have lots of people already here. We got 13 people, eight likes. Man, thank you for the likes. That definitely helps. Uh, this is going to be a great show. I cannot believe it's June already. I mean, June, July is right around the corner. You know, before you know it, it's going to be, you know, season four of Paramotor Podcast here. It's unbelievable. I cannot believe it. Um, let's see. We are going to be chatting tonight with uh, Steve. Do we, we want to call you Steve or Stephen Minty? Call me Steve. It's Thursday night. You can call me Stephanie. <laughs> okay. So we can call you all sorts of cool stuff tonight. Um, but before we get to you, Steve, we're going to be uh, talking to the panel real quick. So as always, we have Linda Anderson. She's our ParamomUSA.com. If you want to be on the show, all you got to do is go to ParamomUSA.com. It forwards over to our Facebook page. You can PM her or DM her and say, hey, I want to be on PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast, ClearProptv.com or Paratalk.org. How are you doing, Miss Linda? Good to see you. I'm doing awesome. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome my chatters, of course, my viewers. I love you, love you, love you so much. Thank you for joining us on Monday night. The only place to be is right here with our awesome host, Sean, Grandpa. Yeah, you can just call me and old Sean. And then we Sean, have our awesome play. guest, Steve. <laughs> yes, Mr. Minty. So it's going to be a, a really good show. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you, Miss Linda. We definitely appreciate you and all the hard work that you've done uh we've already got guests booked into Yay. july already so if you want yes, to be on the do. show we've got two booked in july already so you better get up with miss linda or else uh you might have to be um um what's after july be on the waiting august, list in august peep Woo, yeah that's crazy so thank you linda we appreciate you our pr girl we love you so much you're awesome we also got will fly from willflyppg.com what's up mr will Hey, what's going on? I've just had the uh, last couple of days had some really nice flights and uh, yeah, it's good to get back in the air. Shout out to my buddy James Sutherland. He's uh, back in the air too after his little snafu. So it was good to fly with him. Yeah, just uh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's awesome, man. Absolutely awesome. I mean, imagine five weeks and now he's back in the air. That's pretty incredible. I can't imagine going that long without flying. It's just, yeah, it's, I couldn't it's, either. It's, it's just too much. I don't know if I could stand it. Yeah. And it's James Sutherland. I mean, he flies more than anybody that I know. Yes, definitely. I agree. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you have any questions for our guest tonight, make sure you hit up Will. Just do it at Will Fly and uh, ask the question in the super chat. And if you want to check out his paramotor shenanigans, how do we get up with you, Mr. Will? You can just uh, look me up uh, under YouTube, Will Fly, or you can go to willflyppg.com. Dot com. I love it. Well, thank you, Will. Uh, we'll be we'll be uh, uh, texting you in the super chat all of our questions. We also got Jim from Canada. A hey, what's that? All a boot and your maple syrup money. <laughs> How are you doing, man? I miss you, buddy. I, I miss you. We need to go flying stuff um I, I assume that if your money is maple syrup smelling flavor uh then your wing probably smells pretty good too <laughs> yeah for sure just yeah. don't come up and scratch it while i'm flying <laughs> scratch and snip your wing i love it um so you you do you have your own printing uh company up in canada and you've helped us out with paramotorcalendars.com and stickers and all that other stuff and if you haven't received your stickers um please stand by i'm so sorry I will send out the rest of the stickers uh, sometime this week. So your company is called CarePP, and you can find it at carepp.com, right? That is correct, CarePrinting. And, and uh, your paramotor shenanigans is carepg.com. Yes, sir. 
Thank so, you. So real quick, um, if, if we want to get some stickers made or decals, and decals are decals, uh, how do we uh, get up with you? Do we go to your, your dot com? Do we get up with you as like with a uh, with a phone number or how do we get up with you, bud? Yeah, you can get, get in contact with me through carepp.com or if you want to contact me by phone, it's 1-800-946-4027. Extension two. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know you had a one eight hundred number. That's awesome. That's awesome. 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 Oh, and what are you up to as far as flights? I am at one thirty two. I just succeeded with that or one thirty three yesterday. Woo. Awesome. Awesome. You buddy. have a one eight hundred number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it if I get lonely. I'm going <laughs> to get you a one nine hundred. How's that? That's I like it. That's that's pretty <laughs> cool. We also got our very own Flying Flamingo Jade with our paramotorgirl.com. Welcome to the show. I'm very happy that you're here kicking back and being on our panel. It's been a long time since I've seen you here. Right. Been, been a little bit recuperating. Um, uh, just under a week out from having my knee surgery and did one therapy session and go back tomorrow to get my butt kicked at that again. Um, but pain is starting to dissipate a little bit and walking a little bit faster with crutches or the walker yet. So, and hopefully I'll be back on the show, um, for Wednesday night also this week. That's awesome. I'm so glad that you're recuper recuperating and you had what, both your knees done, both of them or just one? No, just one knee replacement. And, and my mom was thinking about getting a knee, her knee replaced. So she's always watched the show. So could you explain real, real quick? I know we have to get to our guests and stuff. Um, what is involved with a knee replacement and um, do you think it's worth it? Well, I didn't watch any of the videos beforehand because I didn't want to get freaked out, but I do have a hole in my quad. Um, and then a hole in down by my shin. And they said that it's a robot that goes in. It's a new procedure. And the robot goes in and that must help do the precise cutting off of the bones on each end. And um, cleans everything out. And um, I've got one major big scar or stitch across the other ones right in the middle of my knee. Um, going up and down, but that's about it. Just a lot of icing right now and keeping my foot elevated and trying to get my body back into working normal again. Food still doesn't um, appeal to me too much, which is good. <laughs> so, um, okay. yeah, but well, that's really interesting. Uh, I, I, we probably need to do a whole um, uh, video or something about that because that's really interesting stuff i'm ask glad that you're recuperating ask me in a year if it, if it was worth it so but everybody tells me it is it's gonna be worth it good yeah all right well thank you very much i appreciate just it, walk it, off, you. Just right. walk it off jade just walk it off just walk it off just walk it off and you have a uh, all-female podcast on wednesdays over at paramotorgirl.com so if you haven't been over there go to paramotorgirl.com it forwards over to her youtube channel just hit subscribe and hit that bell notification so thank you very much jade good to see Thanks. you and of course it's not about me it's not about the panel members it's all about our guest tonight uh stephen minty is here uh, he's been only flying for about a year but apparently he's made a uh, little dent in the uh, the paramotor community. Uh, it seems like everybody knows him, and I guess we're going to chat with him tonight. So welcome, Steve, to the show. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Sean, for having me on. Well, absolutely, awesome. buddy. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into paramotoring. So I got into paramotoring during like, it was probably like the worst time of my life. I had a year where I got utterly destroyed. Uh, within a span of a year, I got a divorce. It wasn't like an ugly, toxic one. We loved each other. But I mean, that's like you're a family member died. Uh, absolutely awful. And I dealt with it really well. I, even though I'd probably like cry every other night for six months straight, I, I worked out a lot. I stayed focused on my career and uh, I had a good support base with friends. But a year later, I walked away from a 10 year career. I was a 
I'm a superintendent of a funeral home and cemetery and a corporate trainer. And I, I had to walk away from it uh, for reasons I just, I can't talk about at the moment. But my whole entire identity was wrapped up in that. I thought that's all I knew how to do well. Um, I was very well liked there as uh, a leader and I got a lot of results. Like it was like, it was perfect. And, but when I walked away from that, I shut down and, and that was a very physical active job. And even my body started to rot and just lost all self-worth. It was horrible. It was, it was absolutely despair. I can't express how bad it really was. And I had a couple months before I found a a new job, which actually turned out to be way better. Um, But I didn't have a whole lot to do. I was taking care of the house and just doing chores, but it it wasn't good. And ended up having a lot of time to watch YouTube. And I ended up watching a lot of Trent Palmer. I don't know if you know what he does. He does a lot of the short takeoff landing, bush plane. He's a professional, like, drone operator um great youtube channel and i always thought wow this guy just like lands wherever he wants he finds like a little hill and he could just land and and do this and i thought that would be cool but i'd never have the budget to take care of maintain and and whatnot of an aircraft there's just no way and i just randomly started checking out ultralight stuff i was I was a science guy when I was younger, um, was into sort of some aviation things, took some aeronautical stuff in, in high school, got behind a Cessna, and the controls of that. Um, I was more of a rocket science type of guy though, and ended up going to college for music and blew all that away. But I eventually found Tucker Gott, and I was like, wow, this is incredible. I can fly without a cockpit and I can actually afford to do this. And so I started checking them out and I started checking out everything. And at first I was really anxious about stuff like, am I going to break my legs doing this? Am I going to die? And I would even spend a lot of time. um, There's that one YouTube channel, Cameron Saeed or something where it's paramotor gone wrong or paragliding gone wrong. I, I would watch every accident I could and find out what's the reason why it happened. I'd go through uh, Goins accident reports and figure out what happened, what went wrong. Eventually, I realized this is actually pretty safe based on the decisions you make. It's not like someone's swing arm just breaks and then you crash and die. Like there's even a lot of redundancy. Uh, I wonder. So uh, I wonder for all the people that are watching the super chat uh, that are watching this right now have you gone and watched all these paramotor crash videos and paragliding crash videos let us know in the super chat um if you have i think that we got a lot of questions for you i mean they are just flowing in uh mr steve it's unbelievable so um i'll take a pause part way through the story (laughs) (laughs) um was there any uh uh, will can you uh uh, ask him a quick question real quick from the uh, super chat I think you're on mute, buddy. You're muted, Will. Dang, rookie there you mistake, go. rookie mistake. Hey, okay, so know. Nick Griffith is breaking the ice and he wants to know what the craziest thing you've done is. I'm assuming about paramotor. Paramotor related to create the weirdest thing I've done is at Salton Sea, I met up with Dimitri from Iris Paramotor and I dressed in drag and he took me on a tandem and I flew over and flashed a Dell Shanzi. <laughs> i mean i mean i mean um oh, oh okay <laughs> no that's that's funny that's that is hilarious um <laughs> i wonder if there's has anybody else flashed Do- del shanzi i don't know but uh that that sounds hilarious uh so you do uh, a lot of uh drag flying or is that just a one time thing or what i i've only been up in the air once with it this uh this summer, I'll probably do something just for to make something funny. Who knows? It, it's not a common thing. There's a backstory behind that too. Awesome, um, Jim. Is there any other questions in the super chat before we continue? Well, yeah, I noticed one here from Paramotor Steve. He was asking Steve, 
how do you, how often do you get to go flying? Uh, I can fly pretty much whenever I want if the weather's conducive, but on in a good season, twice a week has been the average. I that might kick up. Um, it kind of averages out to once a week, and then winter if I'm not traveling, maybe once every two weeks. Cool. The a uh, sub question to that would be like, how many flights have you had? Only forty two. People think I have a lot more. But on our uh, pre-show, you said that you do a lot of spot landings. So are you counting every time you touch the ground and, you know, do your, uh, do that or. So I, how, how do you count your flights? I guess. I don't do a lot of spot landings. I just recently started doing my high up motor kill accuracy landings. Um, uh, so I, I haven't done a touch and go. So every flight I've taken has been a straight inflate launch go okay. and I'll fly once or twice in an evening. Okay. Usually just once it's rare that I go up twice. All right. Um, the questions are just rolling in. So I guess Will and uh, Jim just go ahead and just start, <laughs> yeah. start knocking them out. Wow. Well, uh, Angela Presley, this is a good question. How does Steve keep such a great positive attitude as flying influenced his positivity? Um, usually copious amounts of drugs and alcohol. <laughs> Not while flying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know. It's, it's like a bug. How do I keep a positive attitude? Uh, a lot of it is I have a lot of great paramotor friends that treat me extremely well. Man, that sucks. Um, so they've been just instrumental to me being positive. And, and the more I get to meet people and stuff, the more it kind of inspires me to kind of maintain that and try to be more of a unifier. Like if I got to be more of a punching bag or someone that is a little more approachable when I go and visit, but definitely the community's helped a lot. Right on, man. Kelby Cox is wondering, uh, are you dating anyone? He's asking for a friend. Nope, I have been single for a while and I'm just glad I paramotor. Right on, man. So uh, there's there's a couple other questions, but I had something I was reading your bio and you, man, you've done a lot. Uh, but one thing I, I caught was that you took the controls of assessment. So what was that all about? Were you at one point interested in general aviation and are you interested like in the future maybe to pick that up? So that was, I took an aeronautics class in high school and uh, part of it is you go up and assess that and you sit co-pilot. So it's not like I did very much. It's just, hey, we're already in the air. Why don't you bank and go up and down a little bit? And I remember the sensation at the time. It kind of felt like, in my words, it felt like you were driving on ice. And it's kind of funny because I actually have some of my, I have my very first flights ever recorded. I, had, I built my own helmet before I trained. And I, say the same, I said the same thing then. Now, I don't feel that way anymore. But, um, and I don't have any interest doing general aviation. When I was younger, I was more interested in aircraft, military technology and stuff like that. But general aviation, I just, I don't want to have a cockpit in front of me. And I remember, I don't know if it's Robert Michaels or whatnot, but he had a U2 pilot on and he kind of said the same thing. He's like, man, I get bored with a lot of stuff now. Paramotors is my jam. And I was like, that's cool. That's coming from a U2 pilot. Yeah. Right on, man. Um, there's uh, so what I'm trying to say is general aviation sucks. No, yeah. well, you know what? I mean, for a lot of people, I mean, I, I come from a background of general aviation, and I can tell you that PPG has scratched that itch, and uh, I don't have a desire to uh, grab a Cessna and go flying right now. I mean, why? Well, and and yeah. that, and I will never have the budget to do it, just with my personal finances and. Uh, I was in college for an awfully long time and but paramotors is doable. If you if you want a million dollars, 
and you could uh, get trained to get your uh, uh, GA. Would you do it? And that way, no, you know, I mean, nope, no, no. Paramotoring pair, pair, pair is way too cool. <laughs> I'm the same way. It's like you know, there's there's just nothing out there that I want to do. Everything under FAR 103 is is great. You know, I mean, I mean, you can fly fixed wing, you can fly whatever you want to, as long as it's under 254 pounds, and get a foot drag it. Yeah. Yeah. Now I do love some of the people that come from GA that do this, especially like Todd Falstead. He, uh, he has just been, he stops every once in a while and shoots me a lot of resources, especially if he knows I'm going to go on a trip and man, that guy can just dump all sorts of information and insight on you, especially when stuff goes wrong in the community. Like when we had that recent midair collision with an aircraft and, and stuff, I really admire like people with his background and his knowledge, because even though I'm, I'm not in general aviation, this is aviation and you should eventually learn more than what you'll actually use too. I'm looking in the super chat for a question that we asked as far as, do you watch any uh, crash videos? And Paramotor Steve says, I watch them to learn what not to do. I think they're very helpful. I, I agree. Uh, I watch them like that too. Joshua or Josh, yeah, Joshua Marsh PPG said, yeah, watch the crashes and do the same, try to learn from them. And um, oops, everything just changed up on me. Um, and there was more. Yeah, I watch them, says Para Ninja. And uh, Matt Soper says, I watched thousands of PG and PPG videos before deciding to take up PG. Still watch a lot of PG and PPG, continuing the education type of videos to help improve my skills. So I think that, you know, watching them are important to learn from them. I mean, it's a great learning way. Yeah. And uh, I, I still keep doing it because next year I might actually get into BG. Congratulations. That's also very fun to free fly. Yeah. Um, looks like the questions are still rolling in. Jim or Will want to ask any more questions? Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, we got a question from uh, Tony Marzano. He asked whether you get any slack from other PPG pilots for being crazy or just for being who you are. No, and that surprises me. I really thought, I, I think part of it is people realize I can't be bullied because something I believe in for myself is not taking yourself too seriously. And so somebody could call me every name in the book and I'm just gonna agree with them. So I don't know if they realize I just can't be bullied or if they, I don't know. I, I, I really don't get much vitriol thrown my way. I'm Man. sure there's people out there that are like talking behind my back, but you know, it's, I, I have actually been treated extraordinarily kindly and there's been people I've been intimidated to approach because I'm like, man, I'm a total joke and this guy ain't going to want to see me. And then sure enough, I'm getting a zoom call or I mean like a Facebook call or something and they meet me and I'm like, wow, and like, I used to be intimidated by you and it, it's, it's been a pleasant surprise. I'm, I'm very surprised. That's awesome. That is wonderful. I've got uh, David Wolf has a question for you, Steve. If you I were like to it. land in a tall grass and tall grass, 10 feet from fairway, like the grass at Hodges field, who would be the first person you would hope to see to help pull you out? Probably be David Wolf got me out pretty quick and rosetted up my wing all nice and professionally and made fun <laughs> of me for a little bit. And Hey, you know what? So at fly-ins, I always fly, I always land at the very edge of the runway. I don't want to be in anybody's way. I don't want to take chances. I just, if I have to walk a mile to my, where I'm staying, it, it doesn't matter. That's what I do. Well, at bad apples, you know, I, I still kill my motor when I'm coming in. Well, I killed it. I hit rotor. I was banking. I went to correct and I went into tall grass field. And sure enough, it's David Wolf with the camera. Like, what are you doing here, Steve? I'm like, oh, but yeah. I've done the tall grass walk of shame many times. So <laughs> no, no judgment here. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the, the chat has just been blowing up, Sean. I mean. So a lot of the, a lot of them are just like general, uh, you know, yeah. statements. Uh, but well, from what I'm gathering, uh, people kind of like you, Steve. 
That's weird. They must be do doing copious amounts of drugs and alcohol as well. <laughs> as paramotor pilots, I that's something I, I in common. Think we probably are, yeah, yeah. But I guess that's why we like you. Yeah. There you go. There it's you weird. Go. I'm gonna have a panic attack later thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, still tons and tons of uh, questions coming in. Uh, Jade, you're more than welcome to ask, or Linda, you're more than welcome to ask too. Uh, who's next? Who wants to ask the questions? Anybody? Okay. Well, <laughs> Angela Preslick says, uh, or wants to know who trained you and did, well, you didn't miss it. So who trained, where'd you get your training or what's your experience or whatever you want to share? I'll, uh, I'll answer that question when I'm kind of finishing up the beginning story. So I got to phrase it a certain way. All right, Angela. So stay tuned. Yeah, you can't you can't go away, Angela. Now, now you have to stay here and just watch <laughs> intensely. Um, sure. Did you want to continue uh, the story, Steve? Yeah, I can okay. finish up with that. So um, checking out accident videos, watched everything. And one thing I I didn't just like read everything about it, but I really studied the community and the history of it, too. Uh, like, who are the people in it? And luckily I had some awesome resources at the time. There's shows like this, David Wolf was extremely active back then. And it was a huge window into who flies and who's extremely active. But I also like looked into the past history of, you know, paramotoring used to have like a big wild, wild west day, you know, where it's like, if you want to do this, I mean, it was more of a blood sport and now it's become more of a, very beginner focused safety, you know, really focused on the beginner and uh, giving them all the tools for success and just checking out that evolution and how people like uh, going and whatnot help build up resources from back in the day. But even back then you would have personalities, you know, it, it wasn't just, you know, people like Dell that were a little crazy. There's a lot of people that were, pretty ridiculous and maybe unscrupulous too. And so I spent a lot of time doing that. And because I had those resources, eventually when I started flying and going flying and stuff, I recognized people. And which sometimes was kind of funny because I'd go up to somebody and I'd be like, hey, you, and then I, I'm Steve. And they're like, am I supposed to know who you are? <laughs> I'm like, no, no, you're not. And uh, so that was a really neat opportunity just to uh, get introduced to the community. So, um, watch a bunch of videos. I told myself if, if I got out of that really bad spell, I was going to commit to this. And sure enough, within three months, I found a new job that within about six months, they ended up paying me a heck of a lot more money. Uh, no stress. Like, in fact, it's, I'm really uneasy about it. I, I, in my career, I take things very seriously. I got to be stressed out. I got to feel like I'm working for it. But when I interviewed, I asked, I told them I was interested in getting this. And normally when you start a new job, you can't get vacation right off the bat. And nope, they were like, yeah, go take a week off, go train. And that was amazing. And since then, they've told me like, never ask for permission to leave early to go fly. Just tell, tell us when you're going to go do it. Like, and I can do a lot of my job remotely. And so I'm able to go on these two, three week trips quite often, as long as I hold down the fort. So it was kind of a perfect storm. It, it was absolutely incredible because I'm not flush with cash. I don't have a, a big budget. When I took my last trip down South, I had my truck and I had a pop-up tent and stuff. I, I don't have the budget for a trailer or RV. I just, I have a budget to keep buying paramotor toys and that's about it. So really a lot of things worked out for me. So I got the new job and I ended up training last April. Uh, and the training week was pretty difficult because we had bad weather quite a bit, uh, really strong winds. Uh, the first couple days were, the first day was okay. And but I, I struggled with it bad because I used to be a grave digger and I used to be very fit, but because I went through a bunch of bad stuff, my body rotted. And so it, 
I, I was hurting. I was hurting really bad. And uh, I just powered through it. Kiting didn't click with me at first. In fact, uh, in my class, I was one of the worst students. And my much younger brother, who's 11 years younger than me, so he was in his mid-20s, decided he wanted to go with me uh, just to experience the adventure. He, he didn't know what PPG even was. I made him read half the Bible, like going out to school. And he ended up being one of the best in the class. He picked up kiting right away. He took off first. I mean, he just, he just killed it. Um, and so we had bad weather. And then finally it came to a day where we had a window of opportunity and we went to trying to get up in the air. But because I had a break from bad weather, I lost some more kiting skills and whatnot. And my very first takeoff attempt, pulled the wing up, spun around. It was a reversible day and something wasn't going right. So I went to go kill the motor, but the throttle I had had a kill switch next to the starter and I accidentally hit the starter. My motor wasn't clutched and my wing came on me and my lines went in the prop and it was spinning fast enough where it, it severed a couple lines. And this was my personal wing that I bought. So it wasn't a trainer's wing. It was my wing. And uh, broke a cage piece and it, it was depressing because this was like my dream. My brother already flew at this point and I was getting down on myself, just getting depressed. And I was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to fly this week. I might have to come go home and come back and uh, ended up having a couple more bad days. But the very last day of training, we had a really good day and uh, finally got up in there four times. My first takeoff, I I literally butt slid into the air. I lost my footing, kept on full power, and my cage was dragging on the grass, and I still took off. And I was like, I don't care. I'm up. I'm happy. And it was, it was just the most incredible thing ever. And it took about flight three during training where I got up there, and I even pulled out my phone, FaceTimed my girlfriend at the time, shaking my phone, thinking I was going to drop it, but I still did it. And uh, But then I really took in, like, what I was doing, where I was. And there's just been a lot of really awful stuff I've been through in my life, not to mention the stuff that just happened to me. And that's when the waterworks came on too. Just crying with tears of joy. It was just, it was absolutely incredible. And uh, so me and my brother came home and uh, I had bought my motor and wing well before training. Uh, the motor wasn't there, but I had my wing. So for the next four and a half months, I kited at home all the time, like a lot. And that paid off big time down the road because when I went to go return to the air, you usually don't have to worry about glider control. The only fine tuning I currently have to do is more of, uh, you know, if, if I'm doing a long taxi and it's not a whole lot of wind, maybe controlling some more pitch oscillation. But in terms of general glider control, I mean, it paid off. I, I would go to inner city parks that were heavily rotored. And at the time I was like, did I forget how to kite again? And I didn't quite realize how much rotor really impacts the air, but because I would kite in very difficult areas, when I would go to a, an open field with very smooth air, it was like easy mode. And even in the middle of the summer, it'd be a hundred degrees and just humid. And I would still go out to the field nil wind and I would do four or five nil wind runs all the way across the field. I lost a lot of weight that summer, but I, I worked really hard at that. That was the one time I was actually a really good student when it comes to this is I spent a lot of time kiting. Um, so I eventually decided not to go back to that first school and I linked up with Nebraska Paramotor who um, ordered a different motor for me and decided to uh, um, he decided to fine tune me, get any pieces that were missing and send me back up in there. But by that point, my brother decided he didn't want to do it anymore. So it was just me. But, um, the moment I hit Nebraska paramotors field, it, it was just a game changer. The community there is just like a group of people that everybody's different, but is the most unpretentious place and group of people you've ever met. And they're all hilarious. And if you're serious about doing this, you just inherit a family immediately. So one of the huge motivating factors of like any time I've had like pre-flight anxiety 
or uh, not having self-confidence, just anything that, you know, there's such a big attrition rate in this because you go to training and then you go home and some people have to do this by themselves and, and then you just find reasons not to do it. Well, I always had a reason because I was like, not only am I going to go fly, even if I'm scared to do it, but I'm going to land. I'm going to hang out with these awesome people the next couple hours, having some beers and just having the best evening ever over and over and over again. It was just absolutely incredible. And one of my dreams that year was actually to make it to endless foot drag. And I didn't think I was going to make it, but sure enough, they got me there and I got to fly. That is, that is really awesome. I mean, um, it's really, I'm really happy that you found a school that you really like and you like the people involved. Cause that's, that's one of the things that's difficult to do is finding a school and finding, you know, people that you click with. Right. And I, I just knew I clicked immediately. I've, I've got some, I've got stories to tell, but I just don't know if I can right now. I, I just, they were people I just knew when I saw them first off, like I'm home. I just, I feel like I'm home. And I don't like saying that Nebraska paramotor trained me because one of the things I kind of tell new students is, is when you go to training and you're able to get up in the air and you have a stretch of good weather that's flyable. If your instructor asks you to run circuits, like go up and down, up and down, up and down, work as hard as you can while you're there. Because when you first go to training, you're kind of checked out of reality. And, you know, paramotoring is unusual. We're going up, we're flying under a bed sheet of strings. But when you're training and you're staying there and you're there every day, it kind of normalizes in your brain. So when you're asked to do circuits and push a little harder, you can. Well, Nebraska paramotor, I didn't really stay there. I'm a 45 minute drive from them. I'd work, I'd come in the evenings. I kind of lost the zone. So when I was asked to start doing circuits and doing other stuff that'd make me a better pilot, I really wouldn't do it. Like he would send me up in the air and I would just hightail it downwind and climb as high as I could. And 10 minutes later, I'd hear on the radio, why the heck are you over there? You come back here right now and you land. <laughs> and it would take me forever to get back because I'd be going up a headwind and you know, on a night where I should have had like six flights, I'd have like two. And, and it's because I was like working during the day, had too much time to think about it. So that pre-flight anxiety would hit me again and I'd be tired and, you know, behind the smiling face and stuff, I've got issues. Like I've got huge self-confidence issues and stuff. So I'd go through this mental torture. So, but if I was still in that zone and I probably would have started with him, I would be twice the pilot today. Like it's, it's crazy to think about, but at least I'm still growing towards that. Absolutely. Do, um, do you have a YouTube? Because I, I don't think that you sent us the YouTube uh, channel. So I've got a YouTube, it's called hot buttered productions. Um, it was a mutual channel with me and my brother that I started kind of before paramotoring. Um, so, I go by hot buttered Steve. It's an old email handle when I was in high school. Essentially, it's from a Drew, a Drew Carey show episode. I don't know if you ever watched that back in the 90s. Um, but yeah, I, I've got a ridiculous name. I, I wanted to start it years ago because back when I was married, me and my wife had really funny banter and I wanted to, and we were into stuff like raising chickens and doing house stuff and whatever. And I thought it'd make something a little entertaining and so I started one eventually because I was going to do cooking and stuff. I'm a pretty good vegetarian cook and well, I'm not vegetarian, but I, I specialize in that and some other stuff. But then I started flying paramotors. And I'm like, this is way more interesting than anything else I'm doing. It just became its own beast. And I'm kind of glad I, I started that channel because I made a lot of episodes when I was just kiting before I started flying. And I would just go out there and sometimes I'd stick a mic on and I would just do... I would talk open and honestly, but then I'd start cracking jokes and just being sarcastic and stuff. And I, I thought it was just trash. I was like, I'm just doing this for fun and whatever. And then I didn't realize that when you got a paramotor YouTube uh, channel, if you get like 200 views on a video, that might not seem like a lot, 
but there's not a lot of paramotor people and chances are it's mostly paramotor people that are watching you. And so when I started, when I would go to a fly-in, it was just like, hey, you're Steve. I'm going to come talk to you. And then I started making friends that way too. So I was kind of glad I did it, even though I, I really felt kind of stupid and silly for doing it at first. And I still kind of do. Okay. Um, we still have lots of questions in the super chat. Um, Jim or Will? Yeah, there was one. I was wondering about your first takeoff. Is there any chance that you have footage of that? Yeah, I've got it on my YouTube channel. Oh, wow. I got to look that, that up. That is, <laughs> you'll be able to, there's a, the video is called like taking my brother on a paramotor adventure. It's, it's on there. My first takeoff was freaking atrocious. I think that would be very interesting. And it's enlightening too, about getting off the ground, even though you're in a tough, tough position. Oh yeah. That was, that was in horrible shape. And then I got in horrible shape again this last winter. I had to work that up. I actually watched that video already, but uh, I'll have to go back and watch it again. Hey, Jason is asking, Steve is asking you to tell, tell about your uh, road trip to Bad Apples. Do we want to jump that far in the future yet? Hey, I'm just going with the questions. That's up to you. Oh, is this the actual video? Yeah. Go. Oh no, there's it's midway. So we'll watch this as you continue telling your stories. Like it's literally like 15 minutes in. Um so after my initial round of training uh with Nebraska Paramotor, I made it to man, I can't watch myself and talk like at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> uh I uh I made it to endless foot drag. I only flew once there. I was pretty timid, but the one flight I got there was actually kind of cool because, you know, uh, endless foot drag is a pretty busy flying. And uh, I had the guys from Parachet watching me take off and I went to go inflate and there were people in front of me and stuff. And I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to taxi around. I'm going to zigzag over here, zigzag over here. Okay, I'm clear. <laughs> get up in the air. One of my buddies links up with me and I just, I had an amazing time, but I also had an amazing time because I finally got to meet everybody. Uh, or not everybody, but so many people that I knew their names, people that had reached out to me. Um, I met Josh Perry from PPG zone who I ended up traveling to salt and sea with. And you just make these instant friends. And I know it's not the same for everybody. I, I can, uh, be pretty gregarious and a type A personality sometimes, which is weird because a lot of my paramotor friends can be very introverted and not be really into people or be anxious around them. So it's kind of weird uh, that they tolerate me, but just, I, it, it just changed me going there. Just absolutely changed me. So did that, came home, flew with Nebraska paramotor a bunch. And then, um, Started to talking to Josh Perry quite a bit from PBG Zone, and I made a joke on one of these shows that I wanted to start a show called Mystery Science Paramotor 3000, where we're silhouettes that move just like the show, and then we watch other people's paramotor videos and crack jokes. He's like, that's a brilliant idea. Let's do it. So we did it for a little while, and uh, I was like, this is freaking silly. And eventually, him and I decided to drive out to Salton Sea, and... We linked up with a, a guy named Aaron I out of Missouri. And these are both Kylo students. And we drove out to the Salt Sea Fly-In and got there plenty early before most people even got there. So I got a lot of flying in before the um, skies got congested and had a blast doing that. Everybody came in, Kylo parked next to us. He took us up for a canyon run. Um, there's mountains and canyons nearby. The air is so smooth there, you can fly all day. I hit my first thermals there, but uh, salt and sea, they're not violent ones that you just feel like you're in a balloon. And it was just incredible. incredible. You meet more and more people. I That's when I linked up with Iris Paramotor. We did the, the drag show flight. That ended up on a Tucker Got video. I woke up one morning in my camper getting texts going like, 
what the heck, Steve? And I've watched this Tucker God video. And he's like, man, this is some of the questionable stuff on Facebook. I'm like, man, I'm just a human dumpster fire. <laughs> it's just, it's ridiculous. But after Salt and Sea, we immediately went to Glamis in California. And Glamis is just absolutely incredible. It's, it's desert, but the dunes are massive. I mean, I don't know how I can describe them without over-exaggerating, but some of them must be over 10 stories tall. Like it's, you feel like you're on another planet and, you know, I'm flying there with, you know, another 50 people and that, that was just incredible. But I saw my first accident there too, as I was coming into land, there was a lady that spun her glider and crash landed right outside my camper. So I was with her until, uh, um, until they called life flight for her. So that was, that was pretty tough to see. I think she came out of it all right, but that was also when Chris Holbert crashed the, the very next day. I was about a mile away from him. Um, so after Glamis, we went to Arizona Flying Circus and Flying Circus has a bit of a reputation of being a pretty tough flying. There ain't a ton of room. Uh, someone had passed away there uh, the year prior. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna fly there. Um, if the winds were coming in a certain way, your takeoff runway was quite short. And I need a lot of takeoff runway. I taxi quite a bit. But sure enough, there the first day I got there, I, I was just like, I'm going to power through it. I'm going to do it. And I got up and I, I flew Arizona Flying Circus and made the whole circuit. And it was just incredible. But then soon after, Kyle, Kyle O sends us a pin. Hey, meet us at Action Airport. Well, uh, about... I don't know how far away it is from the airport, but it's near this giant open pit copper mine. And Chris Holbert actually like foot dragged the bottom of it where they have like this toxic pool. And I got to do my first really major cross country. But when I took off with everybody, I was the very last person that took off. And I was following a friend, eventually lost sight of him. We had to take a very specific flight path to get there because of the airport. We had to go around these mountains and then cross the mountains a certain way so we didn't get just rotored. Well, I, I eventually lost everybody. And I was like, you know what? I looked at Google Maps before I took off. How hard is it to find a giant hole in the ground? And so I went and I, I actually found it. And I, I flew over dead center. And I'm looking down and I'm like, oh, hey, there's my bad takeoff. Yeah. So, so that, that, was your, uh, that was one of your butt takeoffs, huh? Yeah. You are so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was close. Never had to take out. Well, no, at Salt and Sea, I did something. I'll have to backtrack to that. Yeah. Ooh. If you guys are listening to this after the show is live, just go to clearproptv.com and uh, check out the videos. Or you can go to uh, Steve's channel, which is linked in the description down below. Yeah. So to backtrack to Salt and Sea really quick. So I'm generally a pretty consistent uh, with my launches. I. I don't have a problem botching them. I, I do need to work on my posture a little bit. Sometimes when I get lifted up, I'll get swung because I'm not, I'm leaning forward a little too much and that causes you to sit in your seat. Um, but when I first went to Salt and Sea, my first takeoff attempt, I was absolutely exhausted. Uh, I was so excited to be there. I hadn't eaten in like 36 hours uh, and I was just tired. <laughs> And my first takeoff attempt, I actually sat in my seat and I dragged the ground pretty good. Still took off the same way um, and didn't have a nick on my prop, but salt and sea is dusty mud. It's not like sand that's going to really rough you up. But yeah, that, my very first flight there, it's you just see this big cloud of dust. And I've got video of that. Josh Perry and Aaron and I were up in the air. Josh Perry's like, just cussing and like, oh, Steve, just crashed. Oh, no. And it, it's pretty amusing to watch. Um, but yeah, uh, so I was at the open pit copper mine in Arizona and I'm flying dead center over this thing. It's the first time I ever thought to myself, I'm actually afraid of heights right now. 
it was the weirdest sensation I've ever had flying when you're over like a, a giant thousand foot deep hole in the ground. It was, it was crazy. And I wasn't going to do anything ridiculous. Um, I'm a pretty safe flyer and I want to be conservative about my decision making, but I wanted to skim the edge, but I made the bad decision of skimming the edge, the opposite side of where the wind was coming from. So as I was coming down low, I was getting just rocked all over the place and ended up climbing out and going back to the airport. Uh, but on that trip back, I ended up hitting a ton of headwind and I go full trims out and I'm like, man, that sun's setting. It was getting dark quick. And I thought for sure I was going to have to land out, uh, which was in a tough area. And it was just nothing but prickly bushes and cacti uh, in that area, but made it to the airport in the very last minute, thought I got lost for a second and just crazy. So I think that was the last flight of that circuit. And then recently I took a trip to the Southeast culminating in bad apples. Uh, the first place I went to was Dauphin Island, Alabama. And it was pretty tough finding places on the East coast to really fly. My goal was Galveston or Corpus Christi because the beaches are huge, you can camp on them. So I could office camp and fly exactly in one spot. And my goal was to have those laminar beach winds so I can do some two-step takeoffs. Well, Galveston was blown out. So I had to find a backup spot quick. So I found Dauphin Island um, from a buddy, David Rose, kind of helped me find it. And I'm surveying Dauphin Island and looking at sectionals. You know, is there a lot of military aircraft training going on? And, you know, what, what's this place about? And I go online, I find some videos and I see, hey, minyard has been down there. So I ring up Minyard and I'm like, hey, Minyard, this is, this is your bro, Steve. It didn't go down like that. He's like, who are you again? <laughs> but I, I was like, hey, I'm going to fly there. And, and can you give me a site brief? Can you tell me about it and whatnot? And he's like, well, what's your flying style? And I'm like, I want to get up. I want to get over people. I don't want to harass people and find an empty spot and play around in. And he's like, oh, great. So he gave me the lowdown of the area uh, and everything, which was super, super helpful. But Dauphin Island is a tough place to fly out of because it you can't just really go off the beaches because you would be huffing your equipment a half a mile to get past the crowds. There's no really good beach access. But there is a an airport that only sees about six planes a day, but it's on the north side of the island. So if you have winds coming off the sea, it's going over the island, all these huge trees and condos, and it stirs up the air pretty, pretty good. So I go over to this airport and no planes are there. It's nice and quiet. And I start trying to kite because I usually kite when I'm at a new spot. And over here, I'm like, man, I'm on a struggle bus kiting. Well, there's a rule. If you can't kite in it, don't fly in it. And what do I do? I set up anyways, and I'm like, I'm going. And so the windsock's going this way. My wing's pulling me this way. And I take off, but for like the next like 800 feet, I'm just getting tossed all over the place. It was absolutely horrific. Later on, Minyard would be like, yeah, I should have told you, you got to take off at the end of the runway. But I didn't want to do that because the runway actually jets out into the sea. So it's extremely dangerous. You would take off directly over water. And I made sure I had flotation on, but a flotation isn't a guarantee that it's going to save your life. You still have to do bailout procedures and whatnot. And if you don't have time to unbuckle and stuff in flight, you're putting yourself in a lot of risk. So it was an area way above my skill level. So I clear the rotor. I start climbing, I'm probably maybe 1,500, 2,000, and I'm trying to cross the island to cut over to congestion so I can get to the other side where there's beaches and I have an out in case I have a motor out because the north side's nothing but docks. And I look in front of me, I'm like, oh man, I'm level with the clouds. I've never been level with the clouds. I always used to like flying high, but in Nebraska, if you fly in the evenings, the thermals have already kicked up the clouds so high, sometimes you gotta be dressed for it. And so, yeah, I, I finally had my cloud experience and it wasn't like the, you get above overcast and you see this sea of clouds. So I haven't seen that yet, but I got my cloud 
experience in. And, and I was just absolutely, it felt like my first flight all over again. So did that. And then I flew to an empty side of the beach and then played around in a low area where nobody was around and came back, landed. I did a, a test run um, where I took off to see if it, if it was still rotored. And sure enough, it was. I'm like, I can't even stick a landing here with power on. So I landed at the end of the runway just fine. And I, I sat there for like two hours, just like taking it in what I had just done. It was like the most amazing feeling I've ever had in my life with my clothes on. It was just incredible. Um, just absolutely beautiful. And after that, ended up uh, finding a friend on the Florida Panhandle, flew out of his beach, never got the beach winds I wanted. Uh, They're always swirly, coming inland, all sorts of stuff. So I never had that, but it was finally fun seeing people and uh, flying. Dauphin Island was also dangerous because I didn't have a wingman. I was, and that was the first time I was truly solo, solo. So that was nuts. And then after that, I went to Bad Apples and flew out of there, landed in the tall grass, and of course, harassed a bunch of people. And it's just been crazy. I've, I've just had an incredible year. Like, I, I don't get it. I thought I was going to be a solo person, like just a loner when I first got into this. And, and now I get to meet and hang out with so many like awesome people and just made some incredible friends. It's cool. It's it's great. It is great. Uh, We're going to do a, um, do a uh, group shot thumbnail. If everybody's ready. Yeah. um, And real quick too, we have a couple of people that has helped us out. Uh, DP, uh, gave us 10 bucks on the super chat thank you very very much dp appreciate it uh he says um great guests we'll have to watch from the jump and uh padre brook ppg uh gave us five bucks in the super chat we appreciate it said hey will resurgence ppg rocks also we have 17 likes 34 people are watching if you can't help us out uh uh, with with a with a donation that thumbs up definitely helps us a lot so thank you very very much all right yeah thank you so much and and also too i cannot believe that you know we already burned through an hour on on this podcast it's absolutely amazing so you guys are awesome you guys totally rock yep all right so thumbnail well we need to get it off the uh what's that it's on the there you go there you go all right let's see Hold on just cheese there. burgers. Oh, burgers of cheese. Stress, stress. It's so stressful. Paramotor cheeseburgers. I gotta get you it on the right view. It. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Cool. Thank you, Will. One, oh. two, <laughs> three. <laughs> Got it. Awesome. Thank you so much for the thumbnail. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. Thank you, Will. <laughs> Got it. Awesome. Um, we still have lots of questions, do we not, to ask cool. uh, Steve? Yes. Um, I've got a question for him. Okay. The, uh, so I understand you got your PB, PPG2 rating right now, right? And you're yep. working on your PPG3? Well, I'm going to. So this year, my goal is to stop joyriding. I want to really work on the basics and the fundamentals. So my uh, first things I've been doing is um, I'll climb up to like 700,000 feet, kill my motor and go for a spot land. And the first time I attempted it, and this was like a week or two ago, like I, I didn't think I had any landing accuracy whatsoever, but I would do power on dry runs where I'd climb up, keep my motor on, then go down and try to gauge my glide ratio. And I, I was like, man, I bet my accuracy is horrible. I always tell people I have bad aim. Just look at my bathroom. And my first <laughs> attempt of like climbing super high and coming down, I literally landed eight feet from the center of the target. And I was like, man, that's lucky. That, that's got to be luck. And then I, I tried one again the other day and I didn't get that close, but I probably got about 20 feet from my target. And I was like, man, so I, I, I want to keep doing stuff like that. I, one thing I really struggled with um, starting out was landings. Like when I was on the Salton Sea trip, I didn't stick any of my landings at Salton Sea. It wasn't until about Glamis where 
uh, it started coming together for me. It, landings were really a 50 50, like, and they were never bad. My flare timing was, de uh, was decent. So I would never like flare too early and drop like a rock. It was more of, um, I would come in and I'd do a hot slide in my legs, but it, it wasn't bending my frame. I wasn't getting hurt. And eventually on the salt and sea trip, I realized within myself that I'm not bearing my brakes. And so I, whenever I'd come in for a landing at the very, usually when I come in and I'm getting close, I'll pull a little bit of brake, just to slow me down. And then at the very last second, I would, I just tell myself bury, and I would just bury no matter what. And I just started sticking every single one of them. Uh, one thing I want to do to, and I, I've been good ever since, but one thing I want to do is a lot of the people I fly with at Nebraska Paramotor, they got their foot drag landings down. I mean, they just come in hot, dragging their feet the whole way. Sometimes they'll just like almost get down to like a knee and just go right back up. It looks beautiful and smooth. And I've been able to do that twice. There's like, I've got a video of me basically doing the splits and I'm just dragging with my legs down, bury, and I pull myself back up and run it out. Um, so I want to get that smoothed out a little bit, but um, landings, I was just on a huge struggle bus there for a while. I think, I think a lot of people struggle with landings. I may be wrong. So we'll go ahead and ask uh, the 35 ish people that we have in the chat guys, uh, gals, when you come in for a landing, are your, are your landings dialed in? How long did it take for you to dial in your landings? Would definitely like to know. Uh, we also had another super chat donation for five bucks from Will Fly. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you. What did it say? Um, let me go back there and uh, <laughs> look. Oh, it said something about what at Padre Brook PPG said. That's it. Yeah. So we're basically saying Resurgence PPG rocks. Also, too, if you would like to donate to Resurgence PPG, uh, please do so. Uh, you can do that by going to Amazon dot com signing up for the uh, smile dot amazon dot com and uh, whatever you buy on Amazon resurgence PPG gets a little uh, cut so would they say that they got like eight thousand dollars last year or something just from Amazon's uh, smile that's pretty awesomely amazing yeah and you're buying this stuff anyways you can buy it anyways might yeah. as well help your your resurgence PPG yeah man um, any other questions in the super chat or from the panel If you guys are able to give us thumbs up, that really helps us a lot. And we definitely appreciate it. We got 35 people, 21 likes. Let's see if we can get that up to at least 30. Um, any other questions? We are in part two of our podcast with Tony, Tony Marzano was wondering what wing he flies and what motor. All right. Yep. So I, uh, the motor, I fly a 185 on a pair jet Maverick. And the wing I fly, which I trained on, is a 24 meter Dudex solo. I'm in the middle of the weight range on it. So it, it, it feels a little boaty, but I, it's a super awesome B wing. I, if you get into oscillations, it stabilizes itself. And I've got a great trim range, and it's stupid easy to inflate. I, I absolutely love it. And it's probably going to be my forever wing, too, because. I haven't even tied in 2D steering yet. And and all the pros, when they talk about progressing into energy management, other things, they always say that it takes a lot more work to do certain things on A and B wings compared to advanced gliders where you can just pull a string and something's going to happen while A or B wing, you got to work for it and you got to do it correctly in order for that wing to do that thing. So I think I'm going to be on that for a really long time. And if I end up even upgrading in a year, I'll probably just go down to a 21 meter Dudex solo and just be a little bit more loaded on it. I was trying to see what the responses were there in the chat for the for that question. One thing that, uh, Steve, that I found that really helped me with my landings, I know you said you got them dialed in, I don't know about where you are, but here, the difference between summer and winter, I have to retrain myself 
when spring and summer starts coming around because the the barometric pressure changes so much. And so one of the things that really helps me out is touch and goes. I got a really long strip runway and I can just do touch and goes all the way down that strip. And not only that, then you'll have a hundred flights in no time. Yeah, it seems like if you're able to do touch and goes, uh, you know, a couple of touch and goes per flight, uh, I think that you can really dial in your landings and of course your takeoffs too. Uh, it's really amazing. We got two people, looks like they've uh, asked or answered that questions. We got Adam Guile said dialed in for me, but it took 100 flights. Jeremy said it took about 50 landings, not to be afraid of landing, LOL. That's pretty interesting. And, I, see. and I found... I found back when I was struggling with them too, when I actually did the, a couple foot drag landings, a lot of that was, you know, I'd still pull a little bit of one when I was getting kind of close, but I really wouldn't do anything until my foot touched. Like when I, my foot touched, then it was like a hot stove reaction where I was like, ah, and I'd be able to drag my feet and run it out. But that I wasn't able to replicate it all the time after that. Cause I still wasn't fully burying my brakes all the way down to my butt. Have you ever taken a wrap when you come in for a landing? Just wrap your... No, I, I've thought about it. I probably eventually will or adjust my brake lines. Who knows? Right now, it's all going good for me. My last flight, I it was absolutely nil win by the time I came down. And I thought, mm, I don't know if I'm going to break my streak here or not. And I came in and I was like, my foot touched. And I was like, this didn't feel too hot, you know? And my glider, because I'm in the middle of the weight range and, you know, I usually keep it always trimmed out at least two or three, it, it still comes in plenty slow and it's, it's really not that bad. It's just, you know, mostly just making sure I fully flare because that's, that's why I found really made, made it so like my posture would really get me out of my harness and kind of get me upright because when I wasn't doing it, I always felt like I was back and I was going to slide my legs. So whenever I've got my brakes all the way down, I feel like I'm pretty upright. My dog is choking. Asked the question. He said, are you going to EFD? You bet I am. I'm going to harass the crap out of you too. <laughs> Last time when I first showed up to EFD, cause I knew who he and Mark George were. I yeah. stood by their tent with their Evo Rebels. I was like, I kept yelling, like, don't buy this stuff. They're just snake oil salesmen. And I was just like, <laughs> just being ridiculous. Well, hopefully they took it as you being ridiculous and funny. That's that's a gamble yeah. you got to take if you're going to be funny. got to ride that line. Absolutely. Did we miss any questions in the Super Chat, Will or Jim? I don't think so. Awesome. Uh, any other questions on the panel? Well, there was one question. Yeah, okay. we did miss. Shane Wyman wants to know, do you wear a sports bra under your Nirvana shirt? I don't know. How does it look? <laughs> I probably had to earlier this year when I was about 35 pounds heavier. <laughs> yeah, you did say in, our, in the pre-show that you go to these fly-ins and you lose 15 pounds going to the fly-in. Can you tell us about that? How do you lose weight going to a fly-in? Well, those are the more extreme fly-ins. So like Salton Sea, that was a three-week trip. And so I wasn't just like at Salton Sea. I was at Salton Sea Canyons. And I was going to a desert doing this. And, you know, I just not eating as much. And I'm staying up late, partying. I After EFD, I was like, I got to get an electric vehicle. So I bought a Varla. So you just stay up late riding around and I don't know, it's, I, I just operate on a different energy level when I'm going to those things and I check out from the real world and my body just kind of responds that way. You got a electric what? Uh, so I bought a Varla scooter. So when I, my first fly in EFD, I at first I was just walking up and down the runway. I didn't have any wheels whatsoever. And I was like, man, I'm chafing doing this. I don't like it. And one of my friends had a bicycle and I ended up jacking it the entire trip. But after that, I went and I sprung for, I didn't want a one wheel because I didn't want to hurt myself on one. The only injury at EFD last year was my buddy who went too fast on his one wheel, got kicked off and his collarbone went bloop. And 
that was the only injury there. And I saw people get dragged all over the place, flying in ridiculous winds. And sure enough, he was the only one that got hurt. And I was like, no, I want something practical because with a barless scooter, um, you're less likely to get like thrown off randomly because you went too fast. But it's also a utility. I can wear my paramotor, my equipment. So if I go out to a field and the wind direction is coming a certain way where I've got to carry all my equipment across the field, I can just hop on my scooter, carry everything out. I'm not exhausted. And I've got great balance on it. I feel stable. So it's more like a tool. And it's awesome. And I've only gone over the handlebars once. And it's because I was drunk and I hit Sam. Well, Mark George just posted on Facebook earlier today about uh, one wheel injuries. So that seems yeah. to be a, a real thing is the one wheel injuries. Hey, anybody in the and super chat, you have a you have a one wheel. Have you got injured? Do you recommend something else? I recommend the little nine bot, the uh, nine bot uh, segues. Those things are awesome. Um, looks like Angela Perslick says, do you fly in the winter? Are you a winter flyer or or? or? Um. So I, this last winter, I did prepare for it. So I bought those motion heat gloves from Canada. Um, so they're glove liners and you have to put a shell over them if you want the full effect. But when I flew with them, they would get so hot. I bought the 16 volt batteries for them. They'd get so hot. I didn't need shells and up here in Nebraska, but I was totally prepared to fly in the winter. I flew Christmas Eve with Nebraska paramotor. Um, January, I, I don't think I flew in January, but I ended up traveling south, did a bunch of flying that came back and flew in March. And so I, I didn't fly in what I consider winter conditions. Cause I'm, uh, I went to high school in Minot, North Dakota. I, I know what Canadian weather is like. Um, uh, I've been up in Winnipeg. That's what I call winter. So I haven't flown in that yet, but I'm prepared to. Okay. Uh, you're invited up here in this winter if you want to come up we'll take you and flying I, in the cold well uh, don't you have to have a license to fly in canada though you can't just it's, it's more yeah. regulated than here <laughs> that's true but you, we can get you a student license okay i love those motion heat liners though because i hate launching with gloves because of dexterity but because the motion heat is liners it's still doable and then you can just strap on shells and then put your shells on up in the air. So I thought that was pretty nice. Hey, Jim, so, can you find out how much it costs for a student license if we decide to go up to uh, Canada and how long it'd take to, to get that? Is there something that we can do as far as like um, go up there and or, or, or do something online and then get there to get our student license to fly? If you can. I also have to pay. I also have to pay for a Canadian pardon, though. Because what? so and I know this because I used to go to Winnipeg, Manitoba all the time. I have a ton of friends there. Uh, but I was stupid when I was younger and I've gotten a DUI before. Well, in Canada, they consider that an ex extreme criminal offense. And I have to pay $500 and get a pardon from a judge to go back in the country. Yeah. <laughs> Things that we get to learn about, Mr. Steve, on this podcast. I don't drink and drive anymore. I'll tell you that. Hey, is, is this what you were talking about here, Steve Navarla? Uh, Can you see it? Very similar. That's very, it almost looks exactly like it. Those are high boy brands, but um, it's Farla's website that I ordered from. Okay. But it's, it's, it's basically one of those. It's uh, full suspension. It'll go 45 miles an hour dual motors and I paid 1600 bucks for it compared to, you know, one of the nicer one wheels is 2200 and absolutely love it. Huh? If I ever want fresh air and I'm not flying, I'll take a ride over to a, a coffee shop bar go get a beer and then come back and hopefully don't get a DUI riding a scooter drunk. Well, I, I rode I for the first time at bad apples. It was uh, you remember Deweese's setup? She had one. It was like a scooter. And man, that thing really booked. I was impressed. Yeah, I won't go above 25 miles an hour. You'll disintegrate. I mean, <laughs> it, it's crazy how fast they'll go. And they'll go forever. Dude. I love it. Yeah. I like my Segway 9 bot. 
I do too, but every chance I get to ride a, uh, one wheel, I take it, you know, just like five minutes here, five minutes there, and, you know, just kind of get used to it. Um, but yeah, you can't be, I, I mean, for me, the, the segue for transporting your gear down a grass strip. Yeah, I, I got the the one that you had, Will, and then I got the uh, the next version up that goes twice as far with the bigger wheels. And I definitely like the one with the bigger wheels. Really? Yeah. yeah Is that the lot, only difference? A lot smoother. Um, it goes for 23 miles, I think it is, on a charge. So it will last a lot longer at a fly-in. Huh. And it, I don't know if it carries more weight, but it sure seems like it can carry me, a pair motor, and a wing all at the same time. And that's really overloading it. I think it's 220 pounds max. And me with my motor and wing and everything probably is way over 300 pounds. And it has no problem. That's a good job. Yep. So any other questions for Mr. Steve? Or do we want to do um, an after show, bring some more people on? What would you like to do? And how much time do we have, Steve, to, to hang with you tonight? Um, I mean, I've got time. Um, one of the things I want, wanted to talk about that I try to be very open with people because uh, I'm active in the groups and whatnot, and I noticed there wasn't a lot of talking until I started openly admitting to it, but pre-flight anxiety and how that impacts people because mine is pretty brutal. People assume, you know, people have assumed that I'm a very active flyer that, you know, I've got like 150 flights and I'm all this and that. And I try to tell them that actually I'm kind of a huge loser. And I've been saying that for a long time, but I also hate saying it these days because I know there's a lot of people that are like, man, Steve looks like he has way too much fun. You know, my Facebook's been nothing but paramotor people now. They just, it's taken over. So it, if you're a friend of mine, you'll just see me like having fun doing a smile. But in the real world, when I, if I know I'm going to go out to fly, the anxiety kills me. Like it's, it's just mental torture, not to mention from stuff from the past and whatnot. I've got serious, huge problems with like depression and anxiety. Like my brain is just not nice to me at all. And so I started talking a lot about, especially anxiety with flying and and sure enough, a lot of people came out of the woodwork where they're like, you know, 50, 75 flights in and it still hits me or a hundred. I've really? flown with people that they have over a hundred flights and it gets them or they can't even, or, or their bump tolerance, they'll get up. And if they hit a couple bumps, they got to land. And all of a sudden we start coming together and, and it helps to know that you can feel that bad and you're not alone. You know, there's other people that, you know, they're not right beside you. They're in another state, but that feeling is normal. And the only way to get past it, which is the hardest thing ever is to keep doing it more. Um, I find that kiting helps me a lot. It, it goes away for me as soon as I clip in, like I get my motor on, I'm clipping in. It's like, I got a job to do. I'm ready to rock. And I kind of check out. I lose all my fears, but I'll, is it, I'll is have it just, is it just, where is it just pre-flight or is yeah, it is it just clipping in for me. is it uh, not I, clipping in but it, it's pre-flight if if i know i'm gonna fly and it's noon that day like it's it's, it's gonna start hitting me yeah yeah and too and i think part of it is for me too that you know this has brought me such joy and happiness from not just flying but all the people that i'm also kind of wired that if I'm happy, I get really suspicious. Like there's gotta be something wrong. Um, is paramotor eventually going to break up with me? <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, I absolutely torture myself left and right doing it, but it's kind of come to a head for me personally, where it kind of goes away when I do a lot. Like when I was on my salt and sea trip at the end of it, I was just Jones and I was like, I, I don't have this anxiety anymore. I want to go back up, but then I'll have a big long break. It'll come back. And Part of it now, I know if I want to improve and grow even more and more aggressively, I've got to take care of myself. I've got to, I've got to eat right. I've got to get some fitness in just so I can feel good mentally, 
and physically. Um, I, I drink more than I should. Alcohol is depressant. That needs to get replaced, especially if I want to be a little more serious about doing this. Just anything. So the joys that I have from doing this, I have just thinking about doing it that day where I'm that Jones, like, hey, I'm going to go fly. I'm jazzed up right now. And the mental game is absolutely huge because I know the attrition rate in this is just atrocious. And it, it, it takes a lot of work. and It's not necessarily easy. It's not like you can go back and say, oh, hey, I've had a perfect life. It's just nothing but puppy dogs and fairy tales. No, you got to you got to conquer demons. You got to take care of yourself. You got to treat yourself well. You need the support from your friends and your community. Like it's I've had I, I'm extremely fortunate and I'm lucky to have what I have, because if I didn't have like Nebraska Fair Motor in that community, I I wouldn't be here today. I bet you I, I I don't know. It's hard to say, but they were just such a, a big driver and motivator that even if I felt like hell, I just knew for a fact if I put one leg in front of an, another, got my truck, drove to Omaha, I was going to have the best night ever. And I would drive out the whole way saying, oh, I'm going to botch my landing. I'm going to botch my takeoff, even though I, I'm very good at I, I'm not very good. My takeoffs are consistent. You know, I'm, I'm just going to screw something up. And then every night I go out, I have the most amazing time ever. And I have the most amazing time with my friends and I go home and I feel like a superhero for the next two days, like just every single time and it keeps getting better and better. And so I, I kind of, it's been a thing where I need to have some self accountability and realize, Hey, I, I, I need to work on myself too. Absolutely. Um, I would like to talk a little bit more about the pre-flight anxiety because I've haven't heard about it. And I think that I need to know about it. So anybody in the super chat, if you have pre-flight and anxiety, let us know what that's about and, and how you deal with it. And Steve, if you can go into what what's going on and how you get through the pre-flight anxiety, because like I said, I haven't heard about that before. Yep. I mean, part of it is just, you know, for some of us, our brains can't register the activity of paramotoring as normal. Like we'll get into this because we research so much like, hey, I can do this safely. You know, people would get injured or die because they land in water, they run into a power line, or they do acro near the ground. Or sometimes they don't prepare for an out if they have an engine out and they go in and, and do something. But there's, there's a way to do it where, I mean, look at how many schools that we have. Like when was the last time you heard of somebody like, man, somebody got their back broken during training or died like it's and those are just students just starting out let alone someone that's you know kited for a long time and and goes and, and flies and makes smart decisions like you just don't hear it and every time there's something weird that goes on there's usually a reason you know if uh, if a line breaks like an a line it tends to be a super old glider that should have been retired a long time ago. And the person was doing a sat on it. Like there, there's always like logical things. So like, if you're careful, you do your pre-flight um, very well and you just go out and make smart decisions and do it safely, but your brain can't register that. Okay. I'm going to go on a bed sheet hanging by strings and it is whatever. Now for me, as soon as I clip in and I'm ready to inflate and take off, that all goes away and I become jazzed up and I'm just ready to rock. So I'm kind of fortunate in that because I know people that they still get, you know, uh, they get cold sweat on takeoff. Um, I know people who they get it when they're experiencing turbulence in the air. I've gotten rocked all over the place in the air, like bad and not like paraglider level bad, but for a beginner paramotor pilot, I flew in some bad air and I tend to laugh when I hit it. It doesn't mean I always enjoy it, but like, even if I, when I struggled with landings, I know people that are afraid of landings when they can't hit it. Um, for me, even if I knew I wasn't confident of getting a landing, like it still was funny to me. I, like you can hear it in some of my videos where I'm just like coming out. I'm like, am I going to stick it or am I going to slide on my butt? What's going to happen? 
and I still had fun with it. It's just that pre-day, like just thinking like, I'm gonna go out and do this just because my brain couldn't register it as normal. And again, I'm just not used to something bringing me that much joy and happiness. So I'm like, something's not right. I'm not looking at something. I have a very hard time of living in the moment, which I'm glad I have PBG because it's kind of taught me to do that. But there's a lot of weird psychology that kind of goes into this. Interesting. Um, Jade, you mentioned in the super chat, I see that, um, that you have butterflies and stuff too. Can you tell us about how that feels and how you get over it? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how really to get over it yet because it's, it still happens at times. Um, like Eric would be like, let's go out flying. And I'm like, I try to come up with every excuse not to. I think part of it though was, uh, seeing a couple bad crashes. I see. Um, uh-huh. if, uh, yeah, so um, Tony Marzano said, who doesn't get butterflies when you're first starting out? I, I guess that makes sense. And John Wayne said, no wind, 106 heat index, Adam 80, tall grass, short runway, immediate 180 degree turn. I was anxious. So yeah, I guess people can be anxious and uh, understanding what's going on and, and how to take off. Um, but uh, thank you very much for letting me know and, and talking about you know pre-flight anxiety. Uh, very interesting. Um, I, I, honestly, I think that I was built to fly because I was never anxious. Um, I was always excited. It's like, I can't wait to go fly. Um, never felt afraid. Always been really confident in my gear. Uh, definitely confident after an SIV course, which reminds me, are you planning on doing an SIV course anytime soon? When I get the appropriate level of experience. Now, I absolutely want to go visit Andrew Fuller, but at the moment it's because I just want to go to his house and play with his house pigs and ducks and stuff. I don't know if you saw the video of him getting chased by one of his ducks and then he falls down and it sits on his back, but I finally got to hang out with Andrew Fuller and and that guy's that guy's pretty cool. I'm pretty upset with myself I didn't listen to his uh he did an SIV just uh seminar at Bad Apples I wish I would have listened to it but I, when I get to a point where um I'm ready for something like that yeah I'll go do it um but I've heard from other people I I think just recently like Mark and Elena Huddicutt too like you can end up going there too early I I just want to make sure all my fundamentals kiting and everything is just dialed in so i when i go do that it's extremely productive sure that's good advice steve that's really good advice um but to backtrack towards you know the pre-flight anxiety and stuff like that you know when i clip in everything checks out when i fly check i check out like it's incredible but i've also noticed psychologically if you take a look at some of the reasons people get into this um there's something that works for us too, because for me, I went through a very devastating portion of my life. My fellow students I first trained with, they had all just been through tragic accidents where they like lost grown children and in just tragic ways, like a military plane disintegrating and lost a child or, or a hit and run drunk driver. And I, I'm, I've met people who do this that have gone through soul crushing experiences. And this has become sort of a way to live hard to kind of live again. And so on, on the flip side of it, you have people that kind of lose their fears and stuff because it's almost like you lose the will to live. And this is the only way to live again. So you're able to really kind of push through and, um, make it happen i i definitely felt it was that way for me like you kind of it's almost like i i don't care if i die doing this almost i don't fly that way but just to start off i i you know steve i yeah. i can so relate to everything you're saying tonight i mean when i did my first you know very first tandem um it wasn't really all about the tandem you know it was like I said, when you go up in the air like that and you've never done it before, all these emotions come out just out of nowhere. And yeah. 
I still get emotional thinking about it and I'm still on a high about it, you know, and it, it opened up a whole new perspective of life for me and all different well, things. I was so I totally happy when it. I saw that you did it. <laughs> I was so happy for you because my own mother did it. And I had to physically pry her out of the house to go do a tan. <laughs> like my mother has been, life's beating her up bad. I mean, and she's like somebody that just can't get out anymore and, and whatever. And she used to be the yeah. strong inspirational figure for me and to shape me. And, oh. and it kind of hurts to see her kind of weaken like that. And she didn't want to go, didn't want to go. And, you know, Nebraska Paramotor took her up. And when she landed, I mean, she was just like, I want every photo and video all you guys took in for a straight week. <laughs> it was just nothing yep. but that. She absolutely loved it. And so when yep. I saw you went up, I was like, oh, I'm so happy for her. <laughs> you, when you told me your mom went up, that was one of the, that inspired me. Like, I need to do this. But it was so crazy because it wasn't like I thought about it for months. You know, I'm like, God, this would be really cool. But it wasn't like I got up in the morning that morning to go to church and say, man, I'm going to do a tandem today, you know. It, yeah. it was just one of those feelings. I just went there and I just rolled with it. And then before you know it, I was up in the air and I couldn't. I think you know, tandems are fun. Like I, were, I did. Yeah, uh, I want to do it again. I want to do it I didn't again. Take I, a, I didn't take a tandem before yeah. I trained. My first time up in the air, I was, that was the first time I was solo. But, you know, I did a foot launch tandem at Salton Sea. And then uh, Nebraska Paramotor gave me a tandem to test out a new tandem wing at Bad Apples. And that's so much fun. Foot launch yeah. tandems without spreader bars are extremely awkward because Iris oh. Paramotor didn't have them. And I was sitting in his lap and drag. And I was like, I don't know how you're okay with this. I know. <laughs> that would be really like hard. It was, it, it was yeah. kind of awkward. That would be really hard. It's kind of hot too. Running thing. Yes. But oh. thank you. Like I said, Steve, you are an inspiration to so many people and to me. You know, you're growing experience in the sport and it does. It's not it's not all about just getting up in the air, you know, and look at me, I'm cool. There's so I'm so understanding the sport now is like there's so much more to it. So like I said, thank you for your honesty today and everything. So I'd like to um, bring up uh, Ryan Hanthorne's comment. He says, I think even you're very experienced. If you make a mistake and you fail a launch or break equipment, it has an impact on confidence. Yeah, I, I agree. He's got with that, that experience. <clears throat> Ryan Hanthorne's uh, like my original paramotor friend. He's the very first person. I, I had never met him, but I found him online. He was he lives near me. And he was the very first person I reached out to about paramotoring. And he was like, don't buy first. Don't buy your equipment first. Come train at Nebraska Paramotor. I didn't do that. I didn't do anything he said. And then six months later, like it all came full circle and I ended up flying with Ryan. And it was kind of funny. One of my first flights at Nebraska Paramotor. And again, he didn't technically train me because I didn't listen to him. But one of my first flights, I packed a selfie stick. I had it out. I was, I was making stuff and I saw Ryan coming up next to me and he's wanting to give me a, a tip touch. And it was a perfect shot because I had my camera out and he does that. And I, I make like a third of his wing collapse and like, it's just ridiculous. And then I went to my first flying with him and it, it was just crazy. how things just did a 180 and I don't know. It's, it's, it's been too neat. Like I, I just, no, I was just going back to bad apples. You know, you talked about landing out where I saw David running down the field for you. And then a bunch of us gals were videoing the tandem guys taking off, Chris and Eric taking off with, I think, Karen's daughter and uh, her boyfriend. And gentleman rolled his trike. So we went over there and helped him. And he's hanging upside down. And I'm like, are you okay? You know, and shut your engine off. And he's like, yep, I'm okay. And his buddy came over. He goes, he looked at me and he goes, in front of everybody, my pride is hurt. I said, you know what? Who cares? No. And of course, the next and you're day, absolutely... oh, go of on. Course, the first, the, the next day we all lined up to go take off. I'm the first one to go. I mowed through that long thing because I had some lines tangled up and came back out. I'm like, 
what is wrong? And it's like, I felt so stupid, but I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I fixed it and I went back up. So yeah, this is like, that's what I love about paramotoring. So like I, I used to be a collegiate musician, super competitive people yelling at you, if you mess up, whatever here, it doesn't matter. It's your own personal journey. It, and in the eyes of many paramotor pilots too, like when I was so afraid to ask to get into the sport, cause I'm like, Oh, it's an extreme sport. And like, who am I? And then you get into it and you don't realize like everybody flies. It doesn't matter your body type, age, or really anything. Um, and in the eyes of many people, if you just started kiting a paragliding wing, that makes you a rock star. Like if I, if I meet a person they're like, yeah, I just started training. Yeah. I've been kiting at a park to me that you're the coolest person that I want to talk to. I'm going to be rooting for you. I want you to have a great time. I mean, and I've gotten to meet almost everybody. There's a lot of people who are sort of the best of the best. And I walk up to them. I'm like, I don't care if you can barrel roll. <laughs> like, I'm going to come up and tell you some weird jokes and just be bizarre. Like, I just, I don't care about that. And it's just not a competition. We just want ourselves to have fun and have a good time and, and stay safe. And I absolutely love that about this. Yeah, I agree. There's there's no competition in here. And if you mess up, the cool thing is, is that someone's going to come over and help you set up your wing, help you oh, yeah. uh, set up something, get, get help you get that motor on your back. I mean, we're all here and we yep. all want to do the same thing. We all want to fly. We all want all of our friends that are paramotor pilots to fly. And we're out there helping everyone. I love it so much. It's, it's really great. Uh, Tony Marzano also said in the super chat that uh, you should be on the panel because you're a pretty cool cat. Yeah, but if I'm on the panel, then I, I have say. time to think and I'm going to start cracking jokes and making smart remarks. And I've actually been pretty well behaved so far. So I don't know if you want that. You're funny. You're so funny, Steve. No, seriously, you should. I, I try to ride the panel. line, so. You can be on our panel. Paramount knows. It's I didn't want to awesome. come on Sean's show and just do some of the weird, crazy things I normally <laughs> oh, say. Oh, Lord. Yeah, well, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, we'll have to wait for Eric or uh, Jade show to do that, or jump on um, uh, Robert. Do Michael After show. Dark with Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let David Ruff uh, do that with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's no, it, it's all good. Um, yep. man, I cannot believe that we're rolling on two hours of chatting with you, buddy. It's it's unbelievable. Awesome. Um, would do we miss any? Uh, questions in the super chat or anybody on the panel have any other questions for Steve? We're good. We're good. Um, okay. Anything else that you want to chat about, Steve? Before we, so call I think one of the one of the things I love about the community, but it's a bit of a dichotomy because if you look at, and I, I've joked about it before, but like if you look at like how online paramotor pilots treat each other versus in person. Like there's kind of a big difference. There's a lot of big personalities. There's a lot of strong opinions. There's a lot of people that just can't work with another person. It's kind of weird. And when I first got into this, I really thought I was going to be a loner. And I thought my initial impression that stuff was just a, was a hot mess. And then that turned into, man, I'm in heaven. I love these people. I love being around them. I love flying. I love doing all this. And I still believe that you know, for what we do, we're, we're such a small community. It's such a high attrition rate um, that when we get together and we know that no matter what level we're at, that we're just flyers, there's something that transcends something that would divide us in the normal world. You know, it, it goes beyond. And I, I don't know if I picked up on this a little bit more because I've had a very varied life. Like I grew up, half my family were Lutheran pastors. I grew up in the military. I ended up going into the humanities at a liberal arts college. And then I come back home to Nebraska and I went from being sort of a computer book nerd. Now I'm a blue collar maintenance superintendent. And I've just kind of done a whole bunch of different 180s in my life that, um, 
I've just kind of noticed that at least in my attitude, my perspective, you know, I don't come into this community with kind of being opinionated for things that aren't paramotor related. I, so far people have treated me so well that I feel like what we do transcends what would divide us in the normal world. You know, whether it be religion or politics or so many other things. And I think we, we all need to stop and just realize that and realize that we can, we can capitalize on it, that we can operate in what many people treat as a black and white world and make it gray and realize that we've got common ground and that we're able to really appreciate and just love each other when if we didn't do this, we'd be extremely annoyed and kind of hate each other. And the more friends I make and the more, um, the more I get into this, the more I feel like, like, and, and I'm not saying I'm like, everybody just get along. I'm an extremely opinionated person. Um, I feel like I'm well-read. I don't know, but I feel like people have made me feel so much bigger than what I really am and given me the joy for that, that I kind of have to sacrifice a part of my identity because I'd rather be a unifier than a divider. And I'm okay with that because I love doing this so much and I love uh, hanging out with the people so much that I'd rather do anything that gets realistic results and bring positivity even if I'm, I be a jerk, even though I come across as obnoxious, I'm okay being ob obnoxious, but I don't want to ever make someone feel like I was being mean. So I'd always want to be a punch bag and not take myself seriously if that meant it brought other people together. And that's my soapbox. There's a magical thing with what we get to do with lying on bed sheets and strings without a cockpit and enjoying that kind of joy and all that dopamine in your brain with other human beings going through the same thing. And we just not, we need to not forget that feeling because it's, it doesn't exist hardly anywhere else. It's so unique. That's and true. So and when we're up in the air, nothing matters at all. We got about uh, 20 minutes until nine o'clock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the uh, Zoom meeting ID and the one click link. If you have Zoom, join us on here and chat with uh, Steve and, and the panel and ask questions or just hang out on the panel for the next uh, 20 minutes because we're probably going to drop out here in a little bit. Hey, so, Steve. Go ahead. Um, questions been bypassed by Angela numerous times and she's asking if you're planning on coming to the Tomahawk fly-in at all in July by us? I don't know yet. I've been spending a lot of money on what I have been doing that I'm thinking about. I think Wisconsin's an easy drive for me. I, I don't know. I've, I've, my brain's been so soup lately. I, I haven't thought about it, but I, I've been talking to you about it a bit and stuff. I think I might. You know. We'll okay, Angela, are you going to go to Wisconsin if I go to Wisconsin? That's the big question. She is question. coming to Wisconsin. They're coming. Beer. I guess I'm going. <laughs> All right. Did you like that? Absolutely. Looks like Padre Brooke PPG is going to jump on with us. So welcome. Glad that you jumped on here. Um, he's keeping his uh, video off right now. No big deal. Um, any other questions? I actually saw some in the super chat. What did we miss in the super chat? I missed something. What did I miss? I was going to say something. Um, oh yeah, Walter wants to know if uh, who's your favorite Aussie? Walter from the only one I got is it's Walter. Him and I have a special relationship, and he knows what I'm talking about. I know, right? It's like He's Walter. He's my biggest fan. Walter is awesome. And to be more specific, like he's my only fan. Yeah. Whoa. I make a lot of money off that guy. That's awesome. Uh, Ryan said, if you see your friends fail, one, make sure they're okay. Two, make fun of them. <laughs> and then Ryan said, three, help them, I guess. Um, Angela said, I love uh, Steve in the chat. Uh, what's your next fly-in? Did you say what your next line is, Tony? Probably the uh, 
the one up in Wisconsin? If I go up to visit Jade and Eric, otherwise, um, uh, Nebraska Paramotors Motors talking me into going to Oshkosh. I wasn't going to do it, but he might drag me there. So we'll it see. Otherwise, too. definitely EFD. EFD is by far, people wise, one of my favorite clients. I just love the people there. Yeah, I got to go to EFD also. Uh, EFD is, make, it's, I got to make it. Uh, just absolutely incredible. I love EFD. I miss bad kind apples. I, I got to go to EFD, right? Yeah. Well, then you got to meet me. You're missing out. Well, I'll get you drunk. Well, you know what's interesting is that, believe it or not, um, I don't drink anymore because I fly. I love to fly, so I stop drinking. I I don't do uh, four wheelers or three wheelers anymore because I fly. I don't have my boat anymore. Got rid of that because I fly, and uh, all these other things that I used to do, you know, as far as hobbies, I just don't do anymore. The only thing I want to do is fly early in the morning. Go fly sometime during the uh, day if it's really good. I'll go fly midday and, and ride those thermals, and then at night go fly. So it's not uncommon for me to burn, you know, five, ten gallons a day going to fly. It's it's I spend more money on on paramotor gas than anything. I, love I just enjoy flying and wish I had a girlfriend, but they don't like paramotor people unless they already do it. <laughs> That's true. Well, I don't know. Paramom USA, she, uh, she doesn't, she just started flying. So yeah, yeah. she's one of us now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Padre fun. Brooke, Hi, Padre Brooke, how you doing, buddy? Um, hey, how are y'all? Doing good. You have any questions? Hey, you're, you a, hang with you're us? the Kyle O student, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. And I found out we have something else in common. You do uh, uh -oh. restroom trailers. Oh, yeah. That's the business I'm in. You pump it, I dump it. Wait, no. It's the other way around. You dump it, I pump it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, anyway, yeah, that's, just thought I'd join them. Say what's up. Absolutely. Nice. Good to glad see you that, again. Glad that you did. Um, because we're probably Brooke just Cassidy hang with you for another name? 10 minutes or so. Kennedy. Kennedy. Okay. Well, this uh this was really awesome. I've really, really enjoyed listen listening to your stories and stuff like that. Um, I know that well, you're the first person that's ever told me that. <laughs> No, I'm sure everybody <laughs> loves to listen to you. Matter of fact, I even heard comments in there that uh, who was it, Angela, that said he loved that, that she loves your comments in, in the chat and stuff too. So, I mean, people good listeners make good lovers, people really do yeah. like you a lot. Apparently, you've flown with Kyle Oaf on, on XCs, you said. Um, and here's something too so you are currently 175 pounds, but you were 205 pounds. And you have a high bump tolerance, you said. So you go up and fly midday a lot, or why do you have a good bump tolerance? No, I don't fly midday a lot. I just live in the Midwest. So there's some days where it's been so long since you've flown that you'll go up when it's safe. But at our home base, if it's coming from the south, it will get rotor pretty good. But you might go in days where you get some gusts and then you get tossed around a bit. You you fly with a reserve? Yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually install my reserve until like 16 flights in, but yeah, I've got a reserve. That's good. I think a lot of people when they first start, they don't have a reserve. Um, do you side mount it or front mount it? Side mount. Okay. And I make sure I pre-flight that every time, like big time. What is your pre-flight? I kind of wish I had a front mount, but at the same time, it is so nice not having anything right in front of you. But, you know, if, uh, if I wanted to be super paranoid and safe, not having like an accidental deployment, like right. front mount. But I every time I go up, I make sure I don't miss that reserve pre-flight. So how do you pre-flight your reserve? Just in case people don't uh, have a reserve or they have a front mount, how would you pre-flight a side mount reserve? Or how do you do it personally? Because I know everybody does things. So I have, a, I have a dew deck harness. So there's 
Um, it almost looks like weed eater line that kind of goes in and hooks. And I just make sure they're all the way at the end of where they can go because that's basically your pin. Right. Make sure all the Velcro is all together, that the handle is all pushed in and that is zippered to my harness and it's not like coming undone. Um, everything's, you know, packed in there. Basically just trying to look at making sure I don't have an accidental deployment. Right. Okay. Um, anything else? We got about 10 minutes before we call it a night. Anybody else have any questions for uh, Steve or do we miss anything in the super chat? Anybody else wants to join us on here for the next 10 minutes, you're more than welcome to do so. Just uh, open up your Zoom, click that link in the super chat or put in the ID and passcode. Yeah. Padre, do you have anything, buddy? No, not much. I had a, I guess a equipment malfunction and severed a couple lines last weekend. Oh no. So got those replaced. Now I'm waiting on weather. Do you replace your lines yourself or do you send it out to get it replaced? I actually ordered them from uh, lines in a day. Through what? Yep. I I've actually used ordered them, before. them from lines in a day. Lines in a day? Yep. I, yep. I had to use lines in a day after my very first launch attempt because I got lines in the prop. My first launch attempt and severed three. But what's cool about lines in a day, they're based out of uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I've actually talked to them. They're super, super nice. And there's apparently a dry riverbed that's super fun to fly over there. I was going to do it, but I ran out of time. But it's called Flying the Pig. And so if you're ever in New Mexico, call up lines in the day and say you want to fly the pig. And apparently it's supposed to be super cool. Flying the pig. Yeah, lines in a day is who I've used too. The only people I've ever bought lines from. Michelle's a real nice, real nice lady. Yeah, so, Michelle. Yeah, especially if you're kind of new and you're not really sure how to read a diagram, and <laughs> so, she'll work with you. So where, so where is lines in a day? I mean, I just searched for linesinaday.com and nothing came up. No, it's part Should of be Albuquerque, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's part of uh, I don't know, what is the name of that? Um, Bugs Bunny, Albuquerque. I'll find it for you. Paramotor Cities? Yes. That, okay. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. So so the way that kind of works is you pay first. So you send the $20 or whatever it is, the line. And then... 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Yeah. yeah There's yeah, 25 yeah. on here. Well, oh, it's 25. I don't know if that includes... Do they, do they go up? Okay. It's, it's, it's 25 plus $10 shipping now. Yeah. Okay, and she gets it right out to you. The only thing they don't do uh, is uh, unsheathed lines. Right, so they, they do sheathed lines. I actually messed up uh, a C, two C lines. Uh, one of them I just repaired; it wasn't horrible, and then the other one wasn't completely severed, but it needed to re be replaced. Yeah, and then when you actually the line, you want to replace both of them. Right, and I actually it was a. I had my line guide set too high because I, I, I track launch and my line, my lines were swooping down into the prop and didn't realize it until somebody kind of post accidented to me and got that fixed. And I think I'm, I think I'm good now. So. Awesome, man. That's something that I did. Uh, I did that at bad apples. I went from a 130 centimeter prop down to a 125. Um, and haven't caught a line yet. If I, could I, mean, I, I, call, I, I caught a line. I, I busted a line at uh, Bad Apples, and that's what kind of got me. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. And I do notice a difference in the thrust, um, but not super, super noticeable. You fly the one eighty five, Bill? Mm hmm. Yep. Most are. I've got one eighty five. I've got plenty of thrust. You can. You can be okay if you lost a few pounds oh, yeah yeah there's no i've got plenty of plenty of thrust there with the moster so i'm happy with it even at 250 pounds plus my plus my equipment i'm i think it's still got plenty of thrust for me so of course i'm flying a 31 meter universal too so it's got plenty of lift yeah <laughs> 
So I started doing something I told myself I'd never do because, you know, I don't have a whole lot of money to replace equipment. And I think about that. So that affects my decisions. But uh, yeah, foot dragon. <laughs> like, not just a little or a little touch. Like, I'm just like, just dragging my foot all over the field. It's just too much fun. Do you have a good um, field? Like maybe, uh, I mean, is it like a mode field? Is it nice and uh, cut or is it a... Something weird happened to me recently when I came back from Bad Apples. Um, I was just flying one day at the field and it was gnarly. And then it just turned into butter. And for the next couple of nights, it was just the smoothest air I've, I've been in in a while. And I... I listened and I learned from a lot of people. So I would come in and I'd make sure I'd have some breaks in. So I'd have some up and down play. Mm -hmm. And before I would just hover five feet over, a, there's a grass runway we have that's cut into corn that I always practice my uh, straight and level flying just to see if I could, you know, maintain a certain altitude and fly straight. And I never thought I was ready. And these days came. And sure enough, like, I'm just dragging the heck out of my boot. It's just like, I guess I'm into this now. And then I go up, I'm like, hey, I want to try big ears. I'm going to do that. And um, now when I go up, I try to play with energy management just a hair. It's not like I'm cranking or banking. I'm not doing wing overs. But, um, and I have no desire to do like acro. I don't want to do a barrel roll, but. I eventually just want to be somebody that's has their fundamentals very dialed down that they eventually understand energy management and i don't know maybe i'll be doing a barrel roll in a year who knows i i, I just let the story write itself exactly we got a lot of people here so how about we do another thumbnail will real quick so linda takes off her glasses I put on my glasses. Come on, we look smarter with our glasses on, Linda. All right, you ready? Yes. All right, so one. Look at Jim. Two, <laughs> three. Got That's it. awesome. You Jim make a lot of money off that picture. Why is that? Because you're on it? My, my blackmailing Steve. <laughs> Can't be blackmailed. <laughs> oh my goodness so much fun um i guess we can talk about paramotors talk about uh trips talk about whatever i mean if if we're good and we want to hang out for another 15 i can we can do that or we're we gonna can, be here uh, all night long or we, or we can start closing up shop here um over the next couple minutes what do you guys want to do it's up to you guys i mean this is this is everybody's show i mean this is not just my show this is everybody's show if you guys want to stay on and chat We'll stay on for another 15, 20 minutes if you want. It's up to y'all. So you've interviewed Shane Wyman before. Do you remember him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Hello. So I got to uh, meet, uh, meet him for the first time at Bad Apples. That was yeah. his very first fly-in. And it was so cool because this whole time he's been solo, like just at home. He trained with Kylo up in Michigan. And he's just been solo. He met Mike Cotter a couple times. And... Uh, yeah. He found me a month after we both trained. Like we trained at the exact same time. He found me online and we become online buddy sense. And the first time I met him was at Bad Apples. But while I got to do all of my adventuring and having all this fun, he was by himself. Like he had like a four or five month break where he um, didn't fly. I had to help talk him back in the saddle. And he had other sorts of trouble. He had a glider that he's fully loaded on. So he, he flies really hot and his landings are really hot. And, uh, and so bad apples was his first fly in and a fly in that big is very intimidating for Roger. a new person. And I was so proud of that guy because he kicked my butt left and right. Like, wow. like we went out kiting together and Ross Gassaway was helping him and Sean Nasker was helping me like just coaching us. And I was just on a struggle bus doing terrible, even though I'm an avid kiter. And he's up there kicking my butt. 
And then there was one evening we were going to go fly together, but then a gust front was coming in. We were going to call it. And then I went off and did something, came back. And then I saw him taking off. I'm like, oh, heck no. It usually takes me an hour to pre-flight and set myself up and go take off. And I was so mad that he took off that I got ready and took off in 10 minutes and chased him down in the air. And he's all zooming around and he's on this heavy glider and I couldn't keep up with him, but we flew together. But not only that, usually at fly-ins, I'm pretty conservative. I don't fly a whole lot at fly-ins. And he just flew his butt off. He even flew in a storm. He went up in a storm, landed out at some gravel pit with uh, somebody, and then took off again when it cleared and came back. So he got his like first like big flight adventure in. And, hold on. And it was so cool. He And there was like a night where I didn't see him in the next night. I was like, no, you need to come out, hang out with me i usually have a you usually can find me around the parajet tent but since i know everybody i was like no come with me tonight i need to show you some people and have you talk to them and so one night i had him come out and i was like hey that's leah catulo here's just fox here's nebraska paramount here's tom from parajet and then justin fox was working on with him for like a half hour on his motor and i mean he just had so much fun I, it's it was so cool seeing somebody go to their first flying and just like have awesome flying experiences have way more fun than me like flying wise just kicking my butt and then having like the big names helping them out and like it was super cool i was so happy to see shane wyman come that's cool that's what it's all about you know so everybody you look out yeah, for Jack other. Burton's like, yeah, it takes you at least an hour. He's seen me. It, uh -huh. I, I, uh, I take it, it's changing. I'm getting better about that, but yeah. That's Jacques's cool. like, yeah, you don't have your stuff together. <laughs> yeah, Shane was pretty when he came on the show. You know, I had to really talk him into being a guest on the show because he was really shy. And I know he but, sells. But once he, he got on there, and then he sells you know, himself short. Like I don't yeah. do it to the public, but to myself, I sell myself very short, but Shane, I mean, Shane's a better, he, I have more experience than him, but he's a much better pilot than me. Like by far, I'm just, I'm being honest. I've seen him do it. Don't tell um, him that too much. And, Cause you know how, you know, you know, he might be like, yeah, dude. Yeah. It's me. You know, it, it was just <laughs> so neat to see him do it. And he's, he's one of those people like, you you read about and you watch certain people and you wonder what they're going to be like in person you have people like kyle o where you watch their videos he's exactly like that in person um people meet me and they're like are you always like that i'm like no nah, only 20 percent of the time and then they can deal with me and shane he's like i knew he was a lot of fun but in person he's like 100 times better he's so happy and curious like yeah. He would, uh, he, he's not a smoker, but he occasionally likes one. He'd always come up to me, want to bum a cigarette and be like, I need a Scooby <laughs> snack, Steve. You got a Scooby snack for me? Like, it's just, it's just hilarious. Where is, it. where is he tonight? Is he working? Um, I think he had to take off or something. I, uh, okay. I haven't been able to I pay can't attention see the to chat, that, but so, yeah. Yeah. He is Shane, a good guy, if, you, if you have a chance to meet him, he's one of the most fun people to be around. Like I hope to meet him in person, you know, one of these times. I mean, I because I even I even asked him if he was going to church and he had family, you know, doing his family thing for Memorial Weekend. So I didn't get to meet him, but eventually I'm sure I will. Yeah. Sure will. Absolute yeah. beautiful person. Yeah. Like you gotta meet him. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Well, um, who's flying tomorrow? Anybody flying tomorrow? Got a I blowout day tomorrow. What's that? I have a blowout day this week. Might have one day I can go. We'll see. Yeah, it looks like the winds are heavy. I got some people that are texting me. It's like, hey, do you want to fly tomorrow? I'm like, I don't know. I see like uh, Ford Gust uh, 36. I don't know. <laughs> I know. Uh, we'll have to. So <laughs> it's like, I don't know. That Gus might be able to take us up there pretty quick. I don't know if I want to do that or not, but might be good tomorrow afternoon. So uh, maybe tomorrow afternoon. 
I might go flying. Anybody else want to go flying? Anybody else going to go flying? I plan to tomorrow evening. Jim, you're planning on tomorrow evening, you said? Yep. We'll see. Uh, John Wayne, I see you there, bud. Um, are, are you still uh, patching up a paramotor or are you, are you going to be able to fly? And if you're talking, you're still muted. He goes, ah, oh, crap, I'm muted. <laughs> uh, no, I flew today. I'll be flying in the morning. Oh, cool. Good to see you, cowboy. Yeah, cowboy. John. Good cowboy. Bye. I got to hang around yeah. John Wayne, too. Yeah. Bill H. I got to meet Bill H. That's a rugged guy. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> yep. Good, good. Lots of good people. I mean, I really, really, I really enjoy everyone that I've met. Uh, everyone's just so fun. Uh, and I um, screamed like a little girl when I first saw Deweese Milstead. <laughs> oh my god, I just I, I, I totally lost it. Like I just like jumped on that poor woman and I thought she was gonna turn blue. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, oh everybody is just so amazing. And I really do oh. enjoy, you know, these uh podcasts, be able to meet up with a bunch of people. We do a little after show like we're right here, and uh, you know, we're still streaming live, lots of chatting in the super chat. We have more thumbs up right now than we do uh uh viewers, which is really awesome. I think it's great. That's cool. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Don't worry. Um, let's see. Appreciate uh you. Will or Jim, you want to say hello to everybody in the super chat? If not, I'll have to put on my glasses and say hello. <laughs> I closed my chat, so it has to be Jim. All right. Jim, yep. you want to say hello to everybody in the super chat? Okay. Yeah, that... <laughs> All right. So <laughs> do you want me to say hello to everybody who's still in the super chat? No, oh, just everybody. Yeah, just go through and uh, say hello to everybody. Um, everybody in there. I mean, you know, it's like we could just okay. say hello. Yeah, so like, Angela hello, Trump. Walter from Australia, Tony Marzano, Angela Preslick, um, and then just go ahead hey. and say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. No, I love my chatters. Hey, Walter, Angela, Tony. <laughs> my chatters hey, and my hey, viewers. Man. Sorry. That's all. Everybody, yeah. Hi, Domingo, she's in the house. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Hanthorn. Love the thumbnail. Interesting. Jack Burton is in there. We got uh, Flying Flamingo Jade. I always love to see, That's like I'll say, cool. I always like to see Walter because I know tomorrow's going to be here. There is a tomorrow. Hey, Never yeah. Trust the Skinny Chef Shane said hello. So, hey, Shane, Shane good to see you. Glad that you joined us. Ryan um, uh, Hanthorn is in here. Aaron I, the PPG guy, Fly Swamper is in here. Uh, Eric or Mark McElroy from ParalifePPG.com. If Yo, you Mark. haven't yet gone to Paralife PPG, you got to yeah. do it. His shirt, his merch is awesome. I love it. It's great. Um, yeah. I wish that he would send me some more uh, uh, stuff so I can give it away on the show. We got Kelby Cox in here also. It's always good to see Kelby Cox. We got. Um, hey. Oh, I got to meet Kelby Cox, too. He's the nicest oh. guy ever. Oh, man. See? I loved hanging out with Kelby Cox. Uh -huh. Yeah. Ed Campbell said, future Kyle O student. Very excited to start, but very nervous as well. Any advice? Ed Campbell. Um, Kyle O is amazing. You're going to have such a blast. Go down there with, uh, you know, just, just your mind open, and uh, he'll get you in the sky in no time. Kyle is... Is, is Actually, amazing. if you want advice training with Kyle, you need to call me because all the students call me and I see how ridiculous they are on adventures. So you need to you need to talk to me so you don't have your prop covers coming off when you're trying to start your motor. Like seriously, buzz me. <laughs> there you I, go. I haven't done that yet. Now, there you go, Ed. Now you got somebody to chat with. That's awesome. Um, Walter again, never trust screen shift shift, flying flamingo, Jade, uh, Ryan uh scrolling up through here let's see who else do we have man lots of people are chatting in the super chat jeremy is oh, in the super chat. we have travel arm guard 
Does anybody know Travel Arm Guard? No. Never seen that name. Okay. But he asked that question earlier. Yes, he did. What was the craziest thing that you ever done during flight? That was that was his question. I think you answered it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Lots of stuff. Let me go ahead and scroll all the way up. See if there's any. Oh, DP was in the chat here. Hey, DP, hey. what's up, buddy? Uh, my dog yeah. is choking. Was here. I don't know if he's still here or not. Um, it's always good to see you guys. And if I missed anybody, I'm sorry. I'm still scrolling down and looking. But uh, oh, Adam, Adam uh, Gals was here. Daniel Roosh says I'm way late. Going to have to rewatch again. So Daniel, if you do watch it and you're <laughs> up to here, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Yeah. Um, so I got a quick, uh, I just saw something in the chat. Uh, Jacques Burton goes, Stephen, you left your dress in my van. So um, I met Jacques through Nebraska Paramotor. And he's like, don't be too weird. And because he was a guy that gave me a, a really nice landing zone. And uh, so I show up and I'm not being my weird self. And he was totally disappointed. He's like, where's the entertainment, man? What's ah. going on? Because <laughs> I didn't want to weird out like a new guy that I got a favor from. And But I I had an amazing like time down there. It was, it was super neat. Cool. That's cool, Pete. Absolutely. We also got Jason Renald. He said, only had one good landing out of six so far. So I guess Jason is a is a new pilot. Anybody know Jason? You He's doing as know. well as I did. <laughs> uh, Jason, glad that you made it here, buddy. Appreciate it. Mad Slopers in the house also. Yeah. Or it was. I don't know if they're here anymore. Uh, I had to go up there. Shane Wyman was in the chat for a little bit. How you doing, Mr. Shane? Good to see you. Um, Daniel Roosh. Doo -doo -doo. And... I don't see anybody else and if i missed anybody i am sorry you need to speak up and and chat all the time uh yeah. justin uh Scoen, my pre-flight anxiety is making sure steve isn't behind me oh <laughs> all right he lives in my town he lives in my town that's awesome um i think that we got everybody if i didn't i am so sorry you need to chat a little bit more let me scroll down see if anybody else said anything nope nobody said anything else all right so um wait are we doing the after show yeah right now we are angela why are you not in here um you should be so what we'll do right now is we will uh kill the live stream and then what we'll do is you guys stay here and we'll chat uh briefly after we say good night. Does that sound good, guys? So Angela, jump on if you want to, so you can so we can chat for a little bit before um, before we go to bed. I mean, I'm an old grandpa. I need my beauty sleep. This does not come naturally. This this is really this is worked on very. This has worked a lot. You got right? a lot of filters going on, Sean. I got lots a lot of filters. Of filters. <laughs> you you want to see, you see them in real life? It's really you bad. You want to see me in HD? No, you don't. No, you want yeah. this filter, this 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 right here. <laughs> it's like one of those monsters from Stranger Things. It's a lot of filters. <laughs> All right, real guys. Deal. Well, I tell you, I had a really good time. Two hours and 15 yeah. minutes, minutes ish that we've been chatting here. Um, yeah. I had a really good time. Thank you so much, Steve, for joining us tonight. I uh, had an absolute blast. Um, you're crazy, but you're wonderful all at the same time. And I'm sure everybody knows that. Uh, people are saying, hey, be part of the be part of the panel. I agree. If you want to be part of the panel, come on and jump on any time. You are in our guest chat, which is very it's very exclusive we just don't let anybody in anybody that right. is a guest is in the is in the guest chat so you let me on you'll let anybody in no I don't know. No, no no not no no you're a guest that's why you're here it's it's part of it so if you want to be on the guest right. chat and you want to see what's going on which is constant and we get a couple of guests that are like no and they yeah. leave the chat because we just talk all the time. I mean, it, it's so fun. I mean, every day I, I, I have to I have to scroll through like it just is. so much because 
you guys are talking so much about paramours. It's so interesting. Uh, you guys are posting up videos and, and different things like that, which is really awesome. I really enjoy that a lot. So I'm it really glad fun. that we did I love that, it. that I love uh, it. guest chat. So thank you, uh, very, uh, thank you, Steve, very much for joining <laughs> us. I had a blast. Um, let's go ahead and say goodbye to everybody on the on the uh, panel. We'll start with Mr. Jim from Canada A. Tell us what's all about, man. What's it all about? He's on. He's on mute. He goes. I'm not going to tell you guys nothing because I'm on mute. <laughs> Come on, Jim, off of mute, buddy. Oh, there he goes. Oh yeah, you're on mute. Unmute yourself. No wonder you can't hear me. <laughs> Amazing what that mute thing does. So uh, I'll thank tell you. you what it's all about, man. It's all about lying. It is. It and is hey, all about you lying. Guys. Man, Steve, you were a great guest. That was awesome. Thank you very much. Well, remember, it's not all about flying. Also, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. <laughs> no, we're talking $100 bills here. <laughs> Got to get those loonies yeah. and toonies. <laughs> Definitely. Loonies and toonies. I wonder how many people out there that are not from Canada or been to Canada know what a loonie and toonie is. Matter of fact, when my friend Brian was here, I was uh, opened up my my lockbox where I have like all my coins from all over the world because I travel all over the world and I had some old uh, loonies and toonies and I showed him that, which was pretty cool. I got, Did you uh, know that I actually have one of the biggest seashell collections in the entire world? Like I keep them scattered all over the world's beaches. I think you've probably seen them. You, you know, I've, I've been to a couple of your beaches and I've seen a lot of seashells. I stole some. Yep, so those are sorry. mine. Sorry I stole some, man. Ah. So, Jim, tell us a little bit about your uh, your uh, company and um, how we can get some decals if we need some decals. And, of course, tell everybody in America, what the hell is a decal? A decal is a decal. <laughs> and you can contact me through carepp.com. And you can give me a phone call if you want. The number is on there. The 1 800 call, number. I'm going to call it. 1 800 number. You betcha. If you, want to, if you want me to pay the bill, <laughs> give me a call. <laughs> That's <laughs> and awesome. I'll accept the charges. There you go. Um, and I can do all sorts of printing. If I can't do it, I can figure out some way to get it done. I've got lots of friends all, all across uh, North America that to work with me so i can help you absolutely and, and he's the one that actually helped, helped us out with uh printing out all the paramotor calendars on paramotorcalendars.com which we gave away all last year and they are also on sale on ppg zone if you want to go over there and grab them also and we need to we need to do another another calendar i think so we'll hold another um, upload on PPG Zone and uh, contests and all that stuff. Uh, hopefully soon. I guess I got to get up with Josh about it. It's been a while. But uh, thank you, Jim, for helping us out with uh, the chat and all that stuff and um, all the all the stacks and stacks of our ClearProp TV stickers that I need to send out. So thank you very much for that, buddy. I appreciate you. And uh, can't wait for you to be on the panel again next week on Monday on clearproptv.com. That was good. Thank you. Yes, sir, Jim. We also got our very own Linda Anderson at our paramomusa.com. She's the one that will help you get on the show if you want to or tell you how to get up with uh, Eric so you can go on a tandem. That's right. That's right. Yeah. She's got a great career, The awesomeness. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, the tandem was, that whole day was such a blast. Um, being able to meet Eric and Jade in person and everything. They're, they're my family, you know, they're just like my family now. And it was such a good day. It was something that I'm always going to take with me. And I, I want to find other fly-ins and do some more pandas and just keep it going, you know, because life's too short. But thank you, chatters and viewers, for being on our show tonight. It, I totally appreciate everybody, you know, for hanging with us on Monday night. Thank you so much. Much love, much love. And don't forget Thursday night, paraglidingtalk.com with my yeah, son. Cam. Yeah, with Robert yeah, Michaels. Yeah. So y'all joining in on Thursday night, paraglidingtalk.com. 
Absolutely. And if you want to be on the show, just get up with uh, Lynn Anderson. Just go to paramomusa.com. You'll forward over to her Facebook page and just PM her or DM her and say, yo, I want to be on PPG Grandpa's Paramount Podcast, Clear Prop TV, paratalk.org. Every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. We want to also say thank you very much to Padre Brook PPG for the $5 donation. DP with the $10 donation. And we'll fly with the $5 donation. And uh, <laughs> And if you can't help us out financially, man, the thumbs up really helps a lot. And we totally appreciate you guys. We also have um, Will Fly from willflyppg.com that helps us out on the Super Chat. But also, oh, we got an iPad guest. Let's see who iPad guest is real quick before we hook Sounds up. Sounds scary. Y'all. It does. So let's see who... Oh yeah! There we That's go. That's what I'm talking about. Now we're cooking with Crisco, baby. What's hey, up? Woo! Yeah, girl, don't for- my girl. Don't forget to unmute. My if life you is complete with us. now. All right. So we also got Will no, Fire from WillFirePPG.com. He uh, he helps us out in the chat, and uh, he does a lot of really things behind <laughs> the scenes. <laughs> things behind the scenes over here on ClearPropTV.com. So Will Fly, thank you very much for what you do for the show and behind the scenes that people don't know about. I definitely appreciate you, man. I had a lot of fun hanging out with you guys. Steve, you were great. Thanks for coming on the show. Hey, glad you got to see me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> glad you got to see me. I love it. So Will, Will Fly makes some amazing videos. If you haven't seen his videos, go to willflyppg.com, subscribe to his channel, hit that bell notification because he puts out some of the best, the best videos i think better than tucker oops sorry tucker but <laughs> it's the truth uh we'll find some truth. really good stuff <laughs> thank you man. we also got uh flying flamingo jade was able to hang out with us tonight we definitely appreciate appreciate you flying Easy flamingo walking. jade from <laughs> paramotorgirl.com so are you planning on doing your show on uh, wednesday by any chance Yep, I'm going to try and um, changing the format up a little bit. And actually, the following week, I was just thinking about it. I'll be hitting one year um, next week, Wednesday. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say a huge thanks to Jade, because like when I first got into this, like she actually like was a huge part of making me feel like I was a part of a family. And that was like accepted and stuff like like Jade was super incredible. I absolutely loved it. She made the experience awesome. Yeah, and I try to make everybody feel that way, Steve. And right. so, and that's what I love about our show on Paramotor Girl. Like you said, people are able to go to different parts of the states and meet up with other guests that we've had on here and just call them out and say, "Hey, you want to meet me?" And these gals do, and the guests will. It make know. me feel like that. So. <laughs> I met you, Tango. (laughs) So, yeah. So that's what's fun about these shows is getting to be able to meet everybody and be one big family. Absolutely. Yeah. So hopefully you guys can join us um, Wednesday night and um, 7 p.m. Central at paramotorgirl.com. Paramotorgirl.com. Come. She's got great leggings for sale, but if you order women's clothing as a guy, got to order a size up. (laughs) It's ain't going to fit you right. I. Steve has been my model for uh, (laughs) just wish I had a better body. That's all I wish for. Oh, cut it up. Are you going to go to Tomahawk? Maybe. If you play your cards right. I'll start. I'll start out. What's this thing called? A GoFundMe page. Is this the after Wait, show? Wait, broke. Is this being recorded? <laughs> I don't think we're in the after show yet, are we? Um, well, this is still the after show. On this is still the live after show. We're gonna um, do the the private after show in just a moment. So if anybody wants to jump on and do the private after show with us. And uh, we let our hair down and we let loose. You're more than welcome to jump on. Just go to Zoom. I we take it. our clothes off. Man, you, ah! don't, you don't want to know. Uh, 
But if you want to know, make sure that you go to your Zoom, open that up. I posted the uh, ID and uh, passcode and the single link click. So you're more than welcome to hit that and join us now or here in just a few moments after we say goodbye to everybody. So I uh, just want to say a huge shout out to John Wayne. He's a great person. He helps us out uh, financially on the show also every month. He's one of our 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 members. So we appreciate you, John Wayne. Thank you very much. Uh, Padre, Padre Brook jumped on. He's a cool cat. He's jumped on a couple of times. Um, I, I guess Padre is like a father or is that like a grandpa thing? No, it's my, my daughter's called me Padre since high school. So. Oh, that's cool. That's from Mass. That's awesome. Padre Mass, though. That's awesome. She's not yeah. a high school teacher. So. I can't wait to meet Padre. Yeah, Sean. Also. I got to meet John Wayne, and he was like super awesome. Glad I got to meet him. John Wayne, Bill H. I mean, all these guys are just freaking awesome. Love it. Freaking yes. awesome. Hey, Sean, tomorrow night also, 8 p.m., Tuesday night hangouts. Come hang out with us with uh, Sh uh, Shane Robbins, Mark McElroy, and yours truly. Awesome, what uh, what channel are we going to tomorrow? Uh, you're going to just YouTube. You why, why I, mean, I mean, is it Shane's or is it Eric's? It's Shane, yeah, Shane's. Right. Shane's, so we just go to ppgshane.com. And if you if you haven't already, go to ppgshane.com and hit subscribe and hit that bell notification. So when he does do the Tuesday night hangouts, you're able to uh, to be notified. Sean, or Will, you're showing the guns. Oh, yeah, am I? Will's showing the guns. <laughs> Got a license boom, for boom, those boom, guns. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Brandishing the guns. <laughs> I'll show you the guns. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, uh, uh, Angela's joined us too. I love that iPad. I love how it zooms and keeps you uh, in center. <laughs> I'm gonna. It's hot as can be. Linda knows. Hot as can uh -huh. be. It looks like it's still light out here. It's dark as can be over here. And Steve was so uh, in the sun. He was washed out, but he looks like he's in the dark too. Um, why are you getting so much sun down there? Why am I what? Why, why is Angela getting so much sun? Why, why is it so bright down she's, there? She's like, what? she's near uh, Vegas. Because it's my laptop shining in my face. I'm outside. Oh, oh, Angela. What, are you not in a tent? Angela's <laughs> in the desert. I'm in the Vegas, baby. 109 Vegas. That's right. Oh, hey, we're going to be there next year. What? Yeah, we're going to have to swing by and then see you next uh, October. We're going to go oh, for good. a... For a yeah, vacation. don't go in the summer. Don't we're go in the go summer, there. Sean. You'll, you'll die. Like yeah, we're going to go there. You'll, you'll die. die. You'll <laughs> die. I've been there during the, I've been there during the summer. It's hot, but. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sean, if you want to go to the show, Bad Out of Hell, which is Meatloaf, let me know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, it's 15 months from now, so let's start the timer. 15 months, let's count down. <laughs> okay. We're awesome. doing that show. Oh, sweet. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, you guys, uh, don't go anywhere because we're going to be on the private after show here in just a moment, just for a few minutes. But we want to say uh, thank you very much, Steve, for joining us tonight. Uh, you've been an uh, amazing guest. Uh, you've been you've talked a lot and I'm the money sure was we, worth it. it really I'm telling was. you, I, I'm glad I sent you that that five bucks so you could talk and hang with us. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, still texting. Five bucks and a box of chocolate chip cookies. Mm. <laughs> Aaron curly fries that's all I need <laughs> absolutely well thanks well thanks again Jim uh, or Steve appreciate you and Jade and Will uh, Linda Jim uh, Angela jumped on uh, John Wayne thank you very much we appreciate you too um, thank you everybody and thank you for for watching thank you, thank you for tuning in if you tune in during the live show <laughs> thank you very much if you tune in uh, on our recorded show, thank you very much. We definitely appreciate you. And don't forget to give us five star rating on your favorite podcasting app because that truly, truly helps us. We are all over the internet. You search for PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast. You can find us on Amazon, um, on uh, Audible, all the different podcasting apps. We are everywhere. We have just blanketed everywhere. Everywhere. 
they we get between it. 500 and 1500 uh, listens or downloads every week on all of our different platforms. So we definitely appreciate you guys and can't wait for you to swing by again uh, next week at iFlyParamotors.com or PPGGrandpa.com. We appreciate you and we'll see you very soon. So you guys stay here, but we're going to say peace out to everybody else. Peace out, everyone. Bye. We love you and we'll see you soon.